Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's our final match of the day, and I should say evening at this point here at the Paladins World Championships as we get ready for the next match. It will be NIP versus Fnatic. I'm Golden Boy, alongside with Meta Pusher and Gormizer here at the Alienware Analyst Desk. And now we have the, uh, you know, very fortunate, uh, I don't even know the words I'm saying right now, but we have the very fortunate, uh, you know, being to... We have the pleasure. Pleasure. That's what I wanted Boom. to say. Why can I say words? Oh, I don't know why. I gotcha. Because I slept four hours last night. Been been for a while. We had that heart. the fortunate Golden pleasure. Boy. That's what I wanted to say of watching this game. I'm stoked for it, honestly. Uh, NIP, a very dominant team in this competition. And uh, Fnatic, though, they basically have just been getting beat up, but they've made it to this point. So, Gore, let's start with you. Uh, some high level thoughts on this match. I mean, just coming down for it, it's actually going to be interesting to me just because Fnatic's played today. They've got a little bit of practice under their belts. They got really warmed up. Now they've had a little bit of a chance to cool down, although that was a nice long set for them. So mm -hmm. maybe they're going to have to refresh that. But they are coming off a winning streak right now. So they're going to come into this feeling themselves, I think. But in NIP, they've been kind of patient today. They haven't been here until pretty Hanging much out. that last set. And now this is going to be the first time they get to play. So being able to step it up, they're going to also have to kind of feel that warm up. But I think that Fnatic might have that little bit of a leg up, at least for the first game. Then as things get into it, it's a best of seven. So they're all going to get leveled out. What do you think, Matt? I mean, I think he's absolutely right. You know, we're playing a video game in a virtual environment, but these are real people out here, and they're really out real here people, awake all real day. Real feelings. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> NIP has been here since the very first set of the day. Fnatic's been here playing all day. There's going to be some level of exhaustion for both these teams, and it's really going to be which team comes out ready to play. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, we might as well just, uh, you know, I guess set the stage for the stakes here because in this best of seven, the winner will go on to face off against Navi, who came off of a grueling match. And I'm going to use it, Vox, a slobber knocker mm. against, mm, against Nocturne's Gaming. And they are awaiting the winner of this matchup. So Navi in the finals tomorrow. That's going to be taking place at the arena here at HRX 2018. Very exciting stuff. But first, let's go ahead and introduce your first team. It's the Ninjas in Pajamas. Ninjas in pajamas. Bird. Birdo. Bonkar. Lazy. Sheepa. NIP, the Ninjas in Pajamas. Meta, what is it about this team that makes them so special? I mean, one excellence all the way across the board. They have five of the best players in their individual roles. And then with that, you got to talk about the experience. They have mm -hmm. three returning champions from last year and five returning finalists. So, I mean, they've been here over and over. They know what it takes to win and to make it to finals. Gore, what thoughts on this team? They have so much strength, and we've seen, like, just the past couple of days, like, if you just watch that, you know enough about this team to be able to say that they are one of the strongest, if not maybe proving themselves to be the strongest as things unfold. I mean, they, it, it's going to be tough for Fnatic, no matter what. Anybody who has to go up against NIB has to be prepared for that. Yeah, I mean, they beat Virtus Pro 3-0. Yeah. And, and they was, made it look easy. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty alarming to, to see that Effortless. be the case. Effortless. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I like that. Good word choice. That's a ten dollar word, buddy. Thanks. We haven't used that all week. Um, all right. So on the other side of the stage, they have an opponent that has really been through the gauntlet. Whether it's been going up against the Chinese in China Dream or having to send the North Americans packing, it's fanatic. Fanatic. Bugsy. Jera. Fishico. Cybate. Feel.
We've had some amazing performances from all the members of Fnatic, most notably for myself, who have to be a Fishiko on that Eevee on Frog Isle against G2 Esports, just really giving G2 the hands there, Gore. Uh, and what can we expect from this team now against uh, NIP? I mean, I'm really interested in the fact that they've been picking up Ruckus for Saibay lately. That's been something that's kind of curving them into a favor with the way they've been able to pick that up and mm -hmm. kind of adapt that to maps where ordinarily they either would have had to ban it or just deal with it. And most of the time they've been able to deal with it, but it has definitely been something that was rough for them. Being able to pick that up is really strong. And of course, Steel coming through, another really, really strong player, having to make sure he can keep things going. The bans for this, NIP will take out Frog Isle. Bright Marsh will be out for Fnatic. Bright Marsh doesn't, or Fnatic doesn't want to have to deal with the close quarters combat that Bright Marsh offers meta. Yeah, I like both these bans. Nip banning out that uh, Frog Isle is great. Fishco, there's a bunch of good blasters he can play on there, and he really dominates games. And Bright Marsh ban, we saw how NIP handled VP on Bright Marsh, and VP looked so scary on it earlier in the day. So I'm, I like that. And we have Frozen Guard, I believe that yes, was? Yes, Frozen yeah. Guard That's will be the be first map. Yeah. That's going to be Nip's pick. I mean, this has been their go-to map. They pick it first. They've picked it first in every single set they've played and haven't dropped. I mean, they might have dropped one point. I can't remember, but they just, look, they look just cruise. It. They cruise through this map. They always take first pick right here as well. Time for the champion's draft. Let's see what we're going to get for game number one. Will we get the standard Bomb King Makoa ban? Will we get some buck in there? or maybe something completely different. And oh, mm. look at that. Already starting with some Sriracha. As we're gonna get rid of that. I like that. Possibly a targeted ban out on Saib. Uh, when he doesn't get the Ruckus, he's been playing this Shaolin. It's been his best looking champion behind the Ruckus. Uh, so I like it. The range is very strong on Frozen. I'm still kind of curious, just Shaolin over the Grover. It does leave Grover Here's open, which he is really down. strong on this map, but it then comes down again to whether or not you can play it as well as you play some of these others. Like you had said, Shaolin is very, very strong for Fnatic as a champion being able to kind of play that. They know a draft to put around him. They know how to play mm -hmm. him as a champion and make him excel in what he does. So taking that out of there is just an immediate, just stop it. But you have to assume here that Fnatic goes for Bomb King. Yeah, I mean, I would say oh, yeah. so. This is... I mean, when you're talking about blasters on this map, uh, Drogos isn't really an option. The point fight is kind of closed in with that roof. He's not able to make a big impact unless you maybe run worm jets or something, which we've seen certain EU teams do. It was actually NIP who ran that, but Go I would ahead. say the Bomb Keep King. I, I expect that to come after this Ruckus pick, just because Fishko just looks so darn good on that. The issue with this drafting phase right now, especially this early on, there's so much good you want to grab because you have Ruckus, you have Genos, you have Bomb King, and then on top of that, you're going to be bringing yourself oh. even, even the Talus, I guess, just have another top pick, being able to kind of keep I like that rolling. phrase, by the way. The problem I have with this is that we've seen some of the soft counters, and I expect that to be kind of a retaliation. Yeah, and we see Nip go with the Genos right there. They're looking to get rid of that, that Wombo combo that we've seen so much, the Genos through time and space, and the Talus true power just... Why would you give them an option for a free pick on Buck like that? Mm -hmm. To quote Gormizer, so much good. Mm. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Fernando, where, where in God's green earth is Bomb King? <laughs> this is, He's hanging out. It's kind of like He's on his throne right now. Both teams are probably just like bluffing each other right now. Fnatic's like, we're not going to take it here. You take it. Nip's like, no, oh, we're good. We'll take Geno's Fern. Yeah. Will you get it? but we see the Grover, I love this. this Fnatic's gonna be the first team to take Grover away from NIP on ice, on Frozen Guard in the entire land, so at least you're throwing something different at them. Where's Bidey when you, when you need him? He's been calling for Grover this whole time for I, I feel like I can hear him cheering in the distance, and this is just, again, like you ban out the Shaolin, I understand where Shaolin fits in, but Grover is just so much better on this map. And we've mentioned, like, what, there's gonna be a variation mean? as to that where you're gonna see the Grover or the Shaolin. This is just one of the ones where We've seen some Shaolin play. We've seen some good Shaolin play on here, but I really, really prefer the Dover as well. The Mave and the Grok. I like this. The burst from the Mave is going to be really good against those supports. Oh, wow. Feels still feeling himself. Yeah, they. I mean, Fnatic's been the team that's really the only team that's gone with this Ash, and I mean, they somehow make it work. It surprises me every time. Interesting stuff there. The Ash comes out. Certainly not something that I would have expected. Uh, real quick, give me a team predictions, Gore. Uh, I'm going to go Fnatic. 
I think they learned that ash from China. I think it's going to keep going. Oh, NIP, 4-1. And, oh, he he just goes with it. He just goes with it. All right, guys, it's our last matchup of the day for the semifinals here at the Paladins World Championship. Let's go ahead and send it over to your casters at Shift and Vox. Thank you so much, Golden Boy. Last set up on the day, of course. Those of you who are either just joining us, waking up in the morning, looking at you, some of Europe, maybe some of Southeast Asia as well. <laughs> yeah. My name is Hi-Rez Vox. This is I Hold Shift. We're ready to get into the first game between Ninjas in Pajamas and Fnatic and Shift. The drafts, I mean, calling the first few picks is fine, but then you go Mave, yeah. and then you go Ash. The Ash, I think, is either going to be the bane of their existence or the pathway to their success. If you're looking at Fnatic, they've met a little bit of both in the previous rounds, but this is the World Championship semifinals. See how it pans out. And I really love the Mave pickup here because Midnight mandates resilience specifically for Fnatic. This will mean the Bonkar Shock Pulses go unmitigated. The direct damage squad from Ninjas in Pajamas will be very dangerous late game. It's just also really see that there's no Bomb King ban Three, and no Bomb King two. here. He does well on this map, but looking for something a little bit different is Fnatic as they roll out of the gates oh, heading towards the left. feels aesthetic as well. Love I love it. the green hair as well as that freedom <laughs> cannon. Bring some freedom to the realm here. First initial shots do start off a bit of posturing. Down goes the totem as well. Lazy looking for some initial poke takes a lot in return and feels just positioning well around the outs of the objective here. Oh, but NIP's not letting up. They're coming right back in. First blood does go the way of Bugsy though, so on the point. Oh, it's it gonna be NIP low. really caught out here. Oh, gets shut down as well. Cybait closes out that kill. Rockus pushes forwards and Cybait has been performing so well on this pick. Melee strike does not make it through the shield, but Sheepa is retreating here. Fnatic hold the ground. That entire first fight came down to who's gonna win the flank battle. Fortunately for Fnatic, it was them, and that opened up that entire backline wheel, and that's how NIP was caught off guard as, again, you saw Fernando and Grok trying to push forward. And now, again, it's Frozen Guard. 81% for Fnatic. Who is going to make their way back through? Big flank on the peripheral left side of the map from Ninja Pajamas tries to make their way back in, but <gasps> it is getting close to maybe an overtime. Jera deletes Sheepa, though. Lazy tries to throw out daggers. Can they find Maldamba in the back of the map? Pounce is available. Jera, though, is not giving up. Feel is still alive. The long-range daggers don't connect, but takes over and somehow NIP retake. Yeah, and it's still not over yet though. Grover's still here throwing at all these axes and anything can turn at the back end big of whirlwind. one big whirlwind and here it is coming right back at the point. Overtime in full effect. Fnatic are trying to take back oh! control. Through time and space gets two Sheepa. Cleans up Bugsy Ninjas in pajamas. The plays from Bird right when it matters. We've seen it happen from him all tournament long. Getting a chance Kami to show it. Well. <laughs> it's just like, okay, next. Uh, yeah, all right. Next up on the docket, uh, Fnatic are being zoned very heavily. Potentially in comes Steel. Shoulder Bash, could it be used here? It's 99 to 99, but NIP get the first capture of this map number one. But Fnatic does have all five up here, and they can get a little bit aggressive in this underpass area, which is where you're seeing the Ash and the Grover start to toss out all those projectiles. And that's going to be really tough, I think, for NIP to break. You know, They need to start it off with some kind of an ultimate. They do have a Tempest that they want to push and surge on forward. But that's what they need. If they start using it in a retreat, it's just going to be, again, just kind of this pandering in the middle. Right, and I feel like you got to soften up the enemy first. That's your kind of, like, we're going to engage now, and you hit it home hard. you got to at least apply some poke to begin with. Shock pulses do do a good job of that, but Bonkers force back. Healing totem goes down, and Fnatic are pressuring. They're relentless here. And this is actually a good situation for Krok as well. That shock pulse is going to bounce around pretty freely as he rounds this corner. And a minute and 40, about five seconds left. There's Here's that Tempest. Tempest. Here comes aggression. Trying to move in. True power comes through from Talos. Ash asserts dominance. There's no crowd control to box them away. Bugsy is here looking to clean up somebody, anybody, but isn't he able to find a really an easy pick? Pudo jumps in and Bugsy does hit it home. There's the kill. Fnatic hold on. And when Lazy falls like that, it really kind of narrows down NIP. They don't have that outside pressure nearly as much. Ep amplify that when Perdo also falls. So Fnatic doing a good job. The assert dominance was really well placed, and they didn't have to spend much more besides the true power. But again, it was just the Tempest that was used earlier for NIP. They still have three alts up. And Tempest is already at 50% charged as well. The amount of shock pulse damage coming out of Bonkar is really helping charge up that ultimate. Lazy's looking for a flank, though. This positioning, talk about it. Yeah, and Lazy's going to be able to either box this one out or get boxed out, and that was going to really turn the tides of who can control this area of the map. The payload has moved through that underpass and is trying to get into the base of Fnatic, but again, with that number being down and the, all this free space. This is what this is for Grover. If the Mave isn't able to put any kind of damage from distance or put another angle onto Grover, he's going to be able to toss these axes for free all day long. And that damage is just swinging right now. 900, 800 axes going out across the map. And Fnatic have great map awareness right here. Grover currently top of the damage dealt charts as well. 
doing a lot of work. Perdo wow. gets taken out by Fishako. Here's Midnight. And also the third time in space, but none of them really getting converted for many kills. That's what happens when Perdo goes down. That's your kill conversion. Lazy also drops. So with 22 seconds left, again, Fnatic is just harassing these frontliners on the point. And this would be a really bad stagger if these frontliners go down, but they're staying up somehow. Oh, that's just as, uh, for about as long as you'd expect. Cybate is able to chew through Sheeper, start pushing out again. 10 seconds left to go. Ninjas in pajamas should concede. And Midnight and through time and space, not available for the next capture shift. How's that going to hurt them compared to what Fnatic have in the tank? I mean, it's just the ability to make sure you have vision control. It can really turn into positioning control, especially early on when there's so much open space from left to right on that central point. It really will kind of hurt their engage potential. But on the flip side, they still have a lot of defensive ultimates on their side. So if they can really recept well to Fnatic getting aggressive here possibly early, it's going to be nice. And these are the plays that we're talking about. This is just absolutely lined up. Wow, almost finding three, but Lazy actually finds Jera before that through time and space connects. What a really good play from Bird. Absolutely. Now heading into the mid-round buy. Items are on the screen. Shift, what are we looking at here? Yeah, the record coming out is going to be really big. A lot of it at level two. Of course, Cauterize also being mimicked. But again, you take a look at Shifa. He's got that one master riding. He should be the first frontliner to either establish that flank presence or potentially get on the point first. I really like as well the resilience to out of Shifa. Able to get the Immortal active if maybe a Dread Serpent comes out. And Fnatic have that as well as Hexafire available. I would expect that to come out in combination. Bird starts things off. Astral Marks go out. Big wow. flank maybe out of Buck here. Ninjas in Pajamas looking for it, but they're being poked out. And Buck actually won that fight over the left-hand side, so Perdue's going to have an action to get to the back line if he does so choose to do it. You can see again Sheepa right up front with that Fernando, able to put that Fire Lance into a lot of people's faces. Lazy now looking for some shots. Oh no, this is dangerous. Finds around the back line. Uh -oh. Two very low health members. Pounce connects. The damage is good enough. Lazy slays oh. Cybate. Fish Echo answers back. But it's 51% and climbing for ninjas in pajamas. Fnatic, they need to move in here. Bugs has got an angle if he can chase down Bruno. But again, the bulk up too good. Trying to get back to point. He doesn't have a true power available. Grok's going to ghost block away from the Dread Serpent. So that's actually a misplay there from Fnatic. They don't get any value from it. Fish Echo is able to find Bonker, fortunately. But it is the 81% still on point for NIP. And Pudo is still here. Sheep are about to fall down. That is a Bad stack of the ninjas in pajamas right now. Cybate goes in, hits Perdo down with the missiles. Metal marches in and asserts the dominance around the objective. Now it's in Fnatic's control. 66% on climbing. And this is where Ruckus comes into their own. Yeah, the disengage and the dismounts that could possibly come out from Cybate is just absolutely 100% free. Can't even find a dollar store because it's cost absolutely nothing. Though the true power comes out as well just to make sure Lazy doesn't touch. And that's Fnatic finding themselves a point just before NIP can get there. Beautiful play coming through. And Fnatic as well with a couple of kills to their name, even trade so far, but they have objective control. They have the boots on the ground that they really need here. They're starting to make some headway. Now, Niz and Pajamas can elect to defend early and try and force Fnatic back towards their base or try and hit around the choke hold. Where is the best place for them to hold oh, with their comp? I would have said a little bit more passively because the frontliner is down, but actually NFP is getting right up into the face of Feel and he dropped, but careful on the backside. Here's Bugsy looking for Lazy, but Perdo is able to change focus. That's two big kills for NFP and now they're going to push on forward. The big thing that I'm noticing here is that Lazy is utilizing, see that 609 damage with, I think, Luminary from Janus as well as the Cat Burglar bonus damage to really augment their kill potential in combination with Pounce, and especially with the Pounce reset with nine lives. Huge amount of bursts coming out of this Maeve. Fnatic have got to start respecting that. And that's why Maeve has been seen so often. Her ability to reposition and deal damage is now Field trying to take over the statue side of the map on the right. will actually box out Maeve to sit a little bit further back and... NIP's fine with the new position and change, so the Bonker's a little caught out here, and he will drop! And that's really dangerous. Ghost Walker's either not available or burst down too fast for that to come through. Cybate's moving into a very elevated positioning, looking to maybe get into a place where they can get a Hexafire available. Is in a lot of danger here. Fireball will not connect, but at least they've been scattered out. Fnatic can't push through that too easily, but no, Bugsy's going in! This is a really bad spot for NIP. They're all trapped in this little lower Good area. And Lazy. Yeah, Lazy able to get out big, but they're actually going to chase right onto what is no longer a Stellar win for Bird. He drops. What a good crippling toss from Fish Echo. And now Fish Echo is easily able to box out with Buck. In a dangerous situation, oh. Fish Echo gets another one. Sheepa falls down up on high. Perdo does land the shot. So Grover has been removed, but we're barely inches away from conversion. 37 seconds left in the court. Contesting the last second. Cybate has Hexafire. Grok activates Tempest, getting burned down. Oh, no gas pedal, though. Yeah, two kills for NIP on the back end of that Tempest. And one of them being Jera is absolutely huge. The Maldama being off the 
the table means that with no support, there's really no way for the frontliners to survive inside. Bacon's taken down him. Look at this. Thiel is still back here. And that's a great stagger, knowing exactly the time you have to make sure that you're able to keep that Ash away from point and away from their team for as long as possible. You know, a bit of a callback right here, but the cool Seven, roster of Ninjas and Pajamas, six, this is a tactic they pulled out against the early District 69 quite a lot, staggering two, Elven Path specifically one. on Torval many times on a map like this because of your ability to really stagger things out. And with that in mind, Ninjas and Pajamas defend successfully. It's all tied up at two to two, but that came too close for comfort. And chase potential from Grover, is that's something that you don't want to see. And again, that really good crippling axe able to find it onto what is a huge pick. You're able to take that support off the table and things start to look a lot better for you. That's your damage augmentation off the table. That's your peel. That's your heal. That's your sustain and your wombo combo with through time and space as well. And Fisheko playing the Grover so far. Good performance. Needs to step it up a little bit more moving forward to a better point control in the next round. What can Grover specifically do here in the next round to change the way they're working? It's tough. Cauterize 3 is already coming online for NIP. Really for both sides. Cauterize 3 is already there as we surpassed the 10 minute and 20 second mark. But again, you take a look at his ability to use that whirlwind when people break cauterize. It's just, it's the best heal in the game when it's not being applied by that anti-heal. It's faster Tempest at this point, although Tempest does make you faster. Oh. Maid calls down midnight through time and space. Just by space doesn't actually buy much more than a couple of seconds here, but will the combo potentially find Ash? No, Thiel asserts dominance. Lazy retreating from the objective. Thiel avoid grip to the egg. Still within the circle, doesn't take any damage. Bugsy on the backside is not eliminated. Cybate finds Bonka to start things off. It was too much focus going into that deal and now Cybates can actually make him punish with a big zone alt a hex of fire coming in it's gonna create space for Fnatic to not only get the point but also get aggressive and now they can go for some zoning plays once again Fnatic with the Ruckus Fnatic with the Talus these hit scan champions that can dismount from any range as long as they're hitting the shots are in a very good position but Cybate is in trouble Ruckus goes down to Bonka 63% for Fnatic but the disengage starts to wisely come through as Ninjas in Pajamas rally oh but if they're able to find Lazy this will be big oh no no, Fish Echo. I don't know if I agree with that call. Oh, can she get away? Not quite. It's a trade one for one, but still, it's the fact of the matter that Thiel's out here now pretty much by himself, but he does have Bonker pretty low. The healing totem goes down. Bonker stays alive. The outbox comes through. Body block from Perdo as well. The shotgun slams it home. Bird with a star splitter there takes them down, and now we're equal on cap. And Immortal is still here, so even though it is equal on cap and actually now favoring NIP, their ability to sustain on points is going to be huge. All that there is for Fnatic to re-engage this is going to be a Dread Serpent. Bird is caught out and alone though. Bird could go down here. Dread Serpent comes through. Immortal activated. Keeps Lazy alive. That's the resilience coming into play. That shift. And Tempest also being used just for the extra search for 99% in overtime. Perdo able to help out with Cybe 8 and that's Lazy finding Fish Echo. Feels still on point but there's just so much damage for NIP and they're cleaning up around the point. Now coming back it's only a matter of time before the Ash falls and Lazy ends up finding himself a triple kill with that flank pressure by that statue oh side. Oh my goodness. Off Blades coming out big. The Flex oh, on baby. top of the cart for style points as well. Two streaks, you know, make that three for Ninjas in Pajamas and an ult to boot as well. Fnatic are looking at a very dangerous situation here on defense. Shift, they've got the hold from two minutes and 13 seconds here. Yeah, and but the thing is, they do have a Grover <laughs> who's able to essentially sit on that upper rafter and just toss axes for 100% free. And the first payload cap we saw, uh, and the first payload push, we saw those swing for 800, 900 from this distance. Look how low Bonker is already lazy being chased out as well. Fnatic are getting aggressive here, but is that maybe an overextension as Bird finds Cybe eight with through time and space? Oh, and Lazy was actually kind of okay with taking that 1v1 versus Ash for a hot second, and that's mostly because Perdo is coming through the mines. You see him right there. Bonker also uh -oh. helping out. So with Thiel being down, this is really big. Not much defensive sustain can come out of Ruckus by himself. Fish Echo trying to hold things down. Whirlwind is available. Cauterize is in effect. Look at the healing coming through from the totem there, keeping Sheep alive. True power conversion is almost there. Fish Echo activates Whirlwind, but it's just not enough Tempest to close. Will this be it? Thiel is in assert dominance, buying valuable seconds for the team. The next respawn has just come through. Mount it up. Will they make it in time? Cybate comes back in. Hexafire is almost here, but they've got oh. no health left. Deletion oh. and NIP push it on through. Wow, what a play. And again, and this is the problem with Ash at some point, you know, just when you have just an Ash and just a Ruckus, in those moments there where you want that extra 300 or so HP, a couple extra defensive utility based, uh, you know, abilities, it's just not there. And that's the biggest issue. Yeah, she's great at controlling capture points. She's great at disengaging enemies and providing peel for her team. But as far as setting up and making sure defense lasts, it's really just the assert dominance. And again, we saw how much time it bought 
It just wasn't enough. And the problem is then you've got a Ruckus coming in. And Ruckus is great at dealing damage and being a very good 1v1 champion right now. But when it comes to a team fight like that, you've got your emitter shield quickly burned through. And then also just the fact that there were certain ultimates up like Tempest as well. Now that is really the re-engage potential that Ninjas in Pajamas had, similar to Fish Echo's Whirlwind, which as you saw was rendered ineffective by Cauterize. Yeah. Late game itemization came online. NIP for me drafted this beautifully. They both did. I mean, if Fnatic had a really good shot at making that Ash work, but at the end of the day, it, the Assert Dominus just was not enough to get her that defense. For the time being, though, folks, before we get into game number two, whilst the teams are setting up their map draft, and whilst they're getting ready to get into the champion draft, there is so much history between these two squads, and we have a little video prepared for you to explain some of that, so let's go ahead and check it out. And, you know, this all started a long, long time ago, back before the Paladins Premier League even was a thing. At the summer premiere, both squads felt defeat very, very early on. Ninjas in pajamas here, now, or it used to be the Gangstars roster and District 69, both knocked out very early on. And they were all, of course, friends turns foes, foes turns friends. Perdo, Sheepa, the dynamic duo of D69. There needed to be a change that happened for the side of Gangstars. And a lot of history breaks down to what we see today. And as you saw, in order for that change to happen, there had to be space made. And Feel left the roster that became Ninjas in Pajamas, joined the squad that became, became Fnatic. Two young guns, Cybate and Fish Echo, joined the teams. And these two juggernaut squads were born anew from the ashes of the old in the European region. It's just absolutely crazy to see eight different players who at one point in time were able to fight for a championship, meet up in different forms to possibly do it again. And you know what? This is a remarkable situation. We thought we might see it again with Na'Vi, and we may well, in fact, we will see it again with Na'Vi in the finals versus the winner of this set. But both teams have members on them from uh, squads that were actually competing at the HRX Invitational one year ago. There's a lot on the line for both of them. There's a lot on the line for bragging rights as well, because they've been jostling position for the top spot within the European region for, well, yeah. as long as Paladins has been around <laughs> at this point. Yeah, these two teams in specific uh, throughout the entire fall season, throughout their history, before they were known with the rosters and the brands that they currently have, dating all the way back to when it was Torpedo. Remember oh that goodness, back in the day? a bit of a throwback. <laughs> going back as well, District 69 was formed, death and taxes back then as well. But that's enough of a history lesson with the time being. Shift, you're the one who's a bit more of a scholar on that. Jack Falls is map number two for this best of seven set. MIP have the advantage here, but Fnatic, it's their map of choice. And again, you can never rule Fnatic out. So many different times they've come up against hardships, and we, we really did doubt their ability to possibly be vying for this world championship berth. But my goodness, if they've ever looked better, they're right where they need to be, and they're going to be able to go to where they want to go. You need to make sure that this pick draft you know, situation goes in your favor and find a way to really jostle that control back onto your side. And I think it can, you know. I yes. think have demonstrated great control of Jaguar Falls so far throughout today. And what's been remarkable is their adaptability. PPL 4 Finals, they didn't adapt very well. They just made it through the wildcard bracket. Barely. And in the early stages, in the first rounds before the elimination rounds come through, again, stubbornness with this roster was an issue. But moving forwards in the latter days, the elimination matches have come through in Fnatic. They figured things out. They're being flexible. They're working as a unit. And the initial bands coming through, Tala specifically targeting NIP, and of course, Makoa for Fnatic. An early draft into a ruckus first pick comes through. Time to destroy two games in a row now for Fnatic to get the ruckus and you know what would be their first, first overall selection. Of course, having the second and third choice in the last match. Again, showing the priority here as it's the first overall draft pick here in map two. And NIP, this is really interesting because, again, as you look at this roster, it's they, they have a lot of flexibility as well to me. either do that solo front with a bunch of damage behind it. But again, we talk about Fnatic and their ability, you know, Cybate, Fish Echo, Bugsy. Those are three major damage dealers. I would are venture to say that at least two of those three are sitting in the top three overall for damage dealers average throughout this entire tournament. I would love to see those stats and hopefully we will be able to have some of those coming through after the entire championship has ended. NIP for the time being though, they stick with the early draft of Fernando. Forget the buck, this is core to that lineup right now. This is what makes them successful. Fernando's so good on this map, uh, flat out. I mean, left to right, his shield can take up the entire side of the point. It can block a lot of damage. We've seen some really incredible peel plays where there's somebody low HP. You see a Fernando sprint right in 
and hold that shield up, kind of an homage to that early trailer of Paladins where that Don't Grumpy worry, Bomb is about to take gets. the better part of speaking of Grumpy Bomb shifting. There he is. Any more right on the money. Fnatic are drafting in a Bomb King here, and this is partially a shot for Fish Echo. This is a really good pick for them, but also drafting it away from Lazy, who we know is a very top tier Bomb King. Not all, always a good look at this situation. It's a, he's good in this map too. I mean, again, you talk about the Fernando shield to be able to encompass an entire point. The area that that Grumpy Bomb can explode and affect enemies is huge. Not just on the point though, too. It can be really felt when you're trying to get that last push or that last defense. It's just a good solid choice overall. As we see a Nara, again, another you good zone control champion, although here. her mobility is not so high. And I really like this versus the Bomb King specifically because it can deny potentially a King Bomb re-engagement towards an objective that's under control of NIP. No, Zen is interesting I here. I do find that Maybe not peculiar, but actually that might even be a shot at Fnatic based off of some of their previous drafts. It's interesting because they've is opted... It's interesting? <laughs> Gosh darn it, Fox. Any opportunity. <laughs> this is the last out of the day. We are going probably past midnight here, Shift. I am going to jam puns in wherever I can. Green light, Fox. Green light. But it's just interesting to see that, you know, they're actually going to be holding their last pick for a support. So... If you figure at this point it's going to be a dom, but I wonder if Fnatic's thinking about possibly taking out, say, another support here just to try to get that convergence for Sarah specifically online or what could have been a Damba with their Dread Serpent. But we've seen this come out many times before for Fnatic. On, Bugsy on Sarah, it, it, again, you were told me five days ago that that's going to be a pairing, and I was said, I don't believe you. He's done it about three or four times now, and Ash once again joining the scene. This has to be a tool to close things out. You can enable Zen so well. Actually, no, it's small Damba, of need course, support. Which missing yeah. a support here. Oh, there's no crowd control to displace Ash on a map where a certain dominance takes up most of the area of the objective fight. Yeah, just the Dread Serpent, I suppose. That's all you really got. And that will probably force Ash into a wall or a corner more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. And that's a dangerous situation. So it'll be sort of immortal versus, well, immortal around the point well, fight. We saw this last time, though, too. Fnatic giving the Ash, and there was no displacement whatsoever for NIP. So they don't seem to really worry so much about that assert dominance having an impact, but we can see how long, I mean, as far as time goes, it can really draw out a lot of fights and defenses or pushes, and that's the strength that Ash brings. We talk so negatively about her because, again, her survivability is not great when her ultimate's not up, but when it is, she can do a lot to make sure your team can stay in a fight. Also bear in mind that Ceres very much adds to that as well. She's got a great deal of yeah. self-sustain with Restore Soul, and also you got to remember that the Ren Soul will give Sarah self-sustain, and Shadow Travel is just flat out good at contesting objectives. There's really no ability better than maybe if you're running sort of like an Astral Traveler for Grok. And you talk about crowd control, there's not much that will stun her away as well when you yeah. take a look at NIP's roster, so a little bit of safety in that battery ram choice. Cybe 8, it, it, we'll see if he sticks with this. The Flux Generator pickup seems a little odd. You know, I you like think, it here. I mean, it works because as you take a look at what, again, NIP's roster, not a lot of great applicants of Wrecker there. Exactly. So the survivability is good. It's just the mobility has been so key for him before using Two. Ruckus. It's strange One. to not see him go the back to it, even regarding the current situation in their comp. It is a little odd, but I do like the personal flexibility and the willing for Fnatic, again, to adapt, not stick with something which might not be the best pick in this situation. Sin's going for an early flank. Bomb Whoa. King finds them. Lazy forced into Pillow, but Smolder keeps them topped up. This is interesting on the opposite side of the map. Side 8 has to deal with two big bodies coming at him. That's a buck and a Fernando. Dan and Nara is actually right behind him. So that's going to lead to first blood going the way of NIP, the team in red, and looking to move right back forward as Lazy is still in this fight. He's trying to get those burning strikes in. We'll whirl in, try to find those last shots against Fish Echo, but he's got help. And oh, goodness. That, that, that's, right. that's bold. That is a very good poppy <laughs> disengage. That is Fish Echo being a masterful Bomb King player. And overextension from Sheepa means that Bugsy will get credit for that and clean it up. But it's 51% on the objective for NIP. 71% charged already for Jera doing so much healing. And down a couple of players. NIP have got to disengage here. Wait for the opportunity to strike. Look at this advantage, though. They have the Ruckus. They have the Ash. This is where you want to try to find a way to get aggressive, but NIP's not going to let them. They force their way through the Jaguar Falls actual theme set part of the map first, so they have this left-hand control perspectively, and this flank could be bad. Oh, Thiel's caught out as well. Thiel short oh, no. bashes in, but Cybate trades out with Sheepa here. Bonker at the ready, though. Bugsy forced into Shadow Travel, and this is disastrous if the long-range stun hits. It does not, but Proto, oh, will they be able to clean them up? Bomb King's still alive. What is going on? here. 
No one's able to find the capitalizing kills. Lazy getting taken down by Fish Echo. And now Perdo is looking to put him right back in, able to find the bomb king. Can he find the Ceres though? She's really low. One and there's shot. the last shot. NIP That's able to capitalize as well as they continue to stand on point. And also with the duration of that objective fight, it's two minutes and 30 seconds into this map number two. NIP have four of their ultimates, four out of five stacked up right now. If they want to take momentum, they have so many tools to do so. Shift, uh -oh. how are they opening up this fight? Well, they need to get field down. He's so low on HP and Fernando knows. But again, the battery ram gets her out so good play there the 90 percent damage reduction holds true and it's actually lazy who tried to escape had the counter up but not able to survive through cybate's minigun so now it needs to be fanatic pushing right back forward if they can yeah and the really big issue with oh. all that thought seismic crash comes through bonka trying to re-engage slays steal with the impact buck world comes out as well hexafire the big guns from cybate try and find but they're out of splash damage range dread serpent restore soul both ultimates coming through but one support will reign through Supreme, and that does appear to be Ceres. Buck is still alive, and he's able to just take himself a little airborne flight just to show off. Haha, <laughs> not today. Oh, bulk and up as well. The healing is just too much. Shift can Saibe do this? Oh, but here comes the King Bomb in the back line. That finds Sheepa, so that's big. The Inara also very low. That needs to be the next priority target, and you can wow. see how many people are focusing on it. Looking back towards the Buck, the bulk up, keeping him in here, but not enough. Lazy is trying to get something done, but he trades just before he dies, and wow, that was a narrow hold, almost not going their way. All right, so back to the original point. Fnatic are dangerous if you let them survive, as was just demonstrated, yeah, yeah. because you've got double support, and the amount of healing throughput coming through from Fnatic, especially with the Restore Soul when you're out of cauterized range, is very, very dangerous. And now Fnatic hold the cards they've got through time and space. If necessary, they have a cert dominance to hold here, Shift. NIP are trying to soften them up, but Bird's already getting poked out low, but look at this engagement. Yeah, good Grumpy Bomb to try to create a little bit of extra space. Once again, you see the Zin over on the right-hand side of Fnatic's uh -oh. flank, and deal low. The assert dominance does come out, though, so again, that's the power that it brings it's able to find one kill on the lazy 35 seconds remain and now they're able to get fanatic nice and healthy and a little bit more aggressive make sure that defensive line only bends not breaks but nip fully disengaged at this point far enough away around natural cover as well that they can throw out a bit of poke but they're not at risk of fanatic overextending here fanatic don't want to let anybody into this payload cut they're going to hold around their natural choke points nip have time to re-engage and they're going for it oh but here it might have a spot to throw out that third time in space won't use it as of yet 10 seconds down Overtime will surely come. And are though falling very low, trying to get around a corner. Spikes Fish ready. Echoes, yeah, got it. Fish Echoes got the angle, but not able to find the kill. Now Anar is back to full HP. You gotta be careful here. Gazing the best set. Saris Bonkar gets one oh. through time and space. Jera hits it home. Cybate with Axifar 2. Maybe a touch overkill there, but that is a full team wipe. Overtime ticks down. We're all tied up. One. To one. Here's the good news if well for both sides. Let's start with number one. Fnatic, good choice to use this simply because again, you don't want to go down 2-0 against that flank power. What a good execution by both Jera and Cybe. But on the flip side, if you're NIP, this is the power of this dive comp that they're kind of running. They're literally just saying, all right, everyone go in right now. It forces this kind of Twitch trigger for Fnatic to want to hit those ultimates to make sure they can counter it right away. So they did have to, and look yeah. at this now. Fnatic might be on streaks, and they do have some itemization online countering out what NIP are going for in terms of augmentation. In fact, looking like they're exceeding a bit in terms of niche buys here, but NIP have the ults. Three, That's big. Two, and when it comes down one. to the end of this fight, or the, really how this fight will start, those ultimates are huge. Although we are going to see a King Bomb in the hands of Fish Echo if he does get an opportunity to drop it. And left to right is the spread for NIP as they try to open up again that left-hand side perspectively for them. Same exact flank you mentioned. Inara is still mounted too. Not anymore, but she was looking for that background. Here's the King Bomb in the back line. Not doesn't, finding much. Yeah, doesn't find anybody so far. And Lazy also is being forced away. Had five deaths already at the start of this fight, but we're kicking things off here. There's the Zin Spite. Bonka finds Fish Echo. Field does slay Proto, though. So, Fnatic keep themselves in the running. NIP haven't got any capture control either so far. And look at Bugsy straight back to the objective. And now Fnatic's actually able to charge up their ultimates to pretty much above 50% for just about everybody, with the exception of the King Bomb and... Well, the Hexafire, but as I say that, it starts to get closer and closer to that mark. 54% is the capture percentage so far for Fnatic. Wanting desperately to get this payload in those 300 crystals that come with it. And IP, though, has something to say about it. They have a lot of ultimates, and there's the Immortal. Bonka sustaining as well. Everybody's sustaining. Dread7 comes through, sending Ruckus Array. Fish Echo gets stunned out. Will Bird get the outbox? I don't think so. Too low on health, and Restore Soul is channeled. This is so dangerous for MIP, and Cybate is taking control. Oh boy, Wonder out here, finding himself a triple kill. He's clutched these points so often in the history of Fnatic's 
dramatic comeback here to the semifinals and doing it again here when it matters most. Lazy taking a lot of charges from those soul orbs, but the Ren Soul not enough to get him out of the fight. Buying a lot of time. Fernando is back at this point. Contest is coming through. Overtime is here. Is that the big guns? That certainly is. Jera gets kill credit, but it's Cybate with the damage at this point. Lazy finds one, but Fnatic get the objective. NIP were too strong out there. And Bonker just falls late. And again, it's kind of strange to see Bonker playing in Nara, but it again comes with the hand in hand duo of having a Fernando with you. and. Now this is interesting, if you're Fish Echo, he's been playing so aggressive all tournament, now he's getting aggressed on it, it almost seems like NIP is ready for that to happen. Looks like he's able to get out, and similarly, the battering ram will be enough for Thiel to back off, and looking good so far. It's just buying space, right, for Fnatic to start this initial push-up, and they just can't really push out too far, and Fnatic are making a lot of headway for free right now, but Shift, I'm gonna be honest with you right here, I'm not feeling the Zin. Lazy's pick is negative KDA. It is not doing enough right now. Lazy has got to start finding specifically picks. This is trouble right here, though, Fox. A couple of solo orbs again connecting to the frontliners. And now Fernando's in a little bit of trouble as Bugsy able to find one. They're looking for the second onto that Nando, who's not able to get out. Well, oh, pardon me, he still is. I guess Lazy was the one that fell. I was preemptive in the call. And a minute 30, though, they have numbers. It's a five on three, and this payload's real close. And the really dangerous thing right now is unless Fernando has a shield up, you can throw out a convergence. And if Bonka doesn't lock it up. If Bonka has Mother's Grace down, as it will be in just a second, you can pull everybody either into danger or out of range. Beautiful Void wow. though, but oh, gets slain. Bugsy is true flank Ceres right now, but NIP rally back. And Fish Echo's not here either, so you're not going to get a King Bomb at the moment. Bugsy don't uh -oh. find another kill on the Lazies. This is actually huge. They still have a 5-on-3 situation. Thiel's trying to poke, but again, he's really low on HP and doesn't want to use that Assert Dominance as of yet. Fernando caught out on the left. This would be the time to go in if you're Fnatic. Yeah, potentially. As soon as that shield goes down, Convergence will be super effective here, but Lazy's on the respawn and respawn proximity advantage oh. is in favor of the team in red. Lazy's now looking for a flank, finds Bugsy. This is the target which he needs to pressure out, but Bugsy has triggered a discipline and is able to get into shadow travel. Lazy billows away in response and NIP by breathing room. Again, it comes down to the battle in the trenches. The Ruckus and the Ash versus the Inara and the Fernando. Health pool advantage goes to the NIP. Poke battle goes the way of Fnatic. Who can get set up properly to make sure you're exploiting those pros? In that particular instance, it's NIP, the proximity, the ability to throw up shields and walls is just too strong. and. Not enough damage to break him down as of yet. Yeah, trying to engage right here. It's a big move from Fnatic. The impasse from Inara didn't actually really help Sheeper out there. Trapped him in the corner, in fact, and NIP need to hold on. It's seven seconds until Sheeper respawns. Contest is in effect. The payload moving forwards. Inara is very tanky, but how long can you sustain one versus everybody? Well, apparently not very long at all. Jerry's able to find that kill. Side eight, one more on Perdo. And now it comes Fish Echo looking to get the damage done. It's just Fernando left. The shield's trying to keep him alive, but his health pulls low behind it. He drops away. Coming right back in is the Zin. He's the last one left. He's got a bill, but not able to come back and trigger that stall out. It's 3-1 Fnatic with the successful push. And you can see without the ultimate being activated there, without Immortal, as we watch some amazing Cybate plays once again, the sprays and the headshots ringing the bell straight on through. You could see that NIP were unwilling to use the Immortal to prolong time and to buy time for respawns. It wasn't a guaranteed defense. I do think that whilst they should never have let Fnatic get that close, it was wise of them to hold their resources back and stay mm. in control of their ultimate advantage right now. 15 streak for Cy8. He's ringing the bell like a triangle calling in the troops for dinner. He's looking solid 10, Five, 3, and 14. Four, and again, three, the ultimates two, do favor one. NIP, but again, you look at the... Oh, sorry, it's all 10. I thought Ash was still charging. I misread that one. So it's all 10 ultimates are up. It really comes down to who's going to hit the trigger first, I think. And if these flanks that NIP has been trying to start off with, oh, this is an interesting setup here. Thiel's in a lot bait. of trouble. Could be held in place nice by Spike. Shut down. Oh, just before she hits the ground. But King Bomb Immortal comes through. Fischeko forced to run. Maybe NIP can capitalize off the back of this. Buckwild is available if Perdo wants to go on. Here it is. The shotgun slams home. But beautiful wow. peel comes through from Jera And NIP, can they find something? They get the Dread Serpent as well at the tail end of that Buckwild expiring. And the Chase continues for Lazy as he's able to throw a number of those burning strikes over to the right hand side. Now, Thiel's jumping in with an assert dominance. Is that going to be enough for Fnatic to get back? Hexafire is going to try to control the point. But there's a shield up in the way. Sheeper is very low on health. Thiel is in control right now, but losing health very rapidly. And you've got to be very, very careful here as NIP can move in for the kill. There's the shotgun blast again, but it's an even trade so far. And look at Sheeper's health. Nothing left in the tanks. Perdo can self sustain, but we need some healing on this front line if we want to see a re 
engagement. That was the yeah, tooth and nail when it comes to that three on three. That was on the point. 72% for Fnatic fighting back to the 89 that Ninjas in Pajamas has. Anar is trying to get there, but he's taking so much damage. Fortunately, the impasse wall is there to break that line of sight for a short amount of time. Lazy able to get the billow off, but doesn't have any cooldowns at this point. One for one trade on point again, Vox. Steel takes over as well. Gets one kill alongside Jera. And look at this. The ultimates the Fnatic held on the tank are doing so much work right now. FNC are in control. Double kill for the flank. Zaris Bugsy. Lazy slays Jarrah in response. Taps into overtime. Can they get damage on the side bait? But look at the healing coming through. This oh. is disastrous. In dies Pado. Out dies Pado. Bonka sinks like a stone, no doubt, as that is just too much damage to deal with. And Bugsy goes on a killing spree. A six streak in overtime. Once again, it's ticking, but who's this? 22 streak for Saib 8. Fernando's going to touch, but this stagger is not looking very good. The overtime continues to dwindle away in Fnatic on the hands of the young gun Saib 8 and that ruckus game point, which has been a big factor throughout this entire resurgence for Fnatic, shows up again when it matters. My goodness, Saib 8 must have a headache from the hit sound right now. To be completely honest with <laughs> I you, getting one. ringing in your ears, I can pretty much hear it still going in the background. Um, Shift them. It's safe to say that I can feel it. <laughs> I'm sure to go that there. Fnatic <laughs> can as well. Looking so good after that game, and despite the area control bought by NIP, they just had better. Well, they did a better job of it. It felt like. Yeah, I mean, you, yes, absolutely. We talked about difficult, uh, but you, I mean, there's no other way of saying it when it comes down to it. We talked about the front line, how NIP was all about control, sustain, and and Fnatic was all about poke and prod. And at the end of the day, poke and prod won it. So, I mean, again, you take a look at this Ash pick. I know it's still pretty controversial in a lot of our analysts and, of course, a lot of our commentary staff's minds. I'm sure a couple of you out there are also saying, my goodness, why does Ash continue to get picked? And it's moments like that. It's that, that big burst that she can bring to the table, that sustain with the assert dominance. But Fish Echo as well, adding to that, again, just big, bold plays from Fish Echo on the Bomb King. It really turns the tide in so many of these fights. Lots more bees. And I just want to point out as well, we've seen the Ash a couple of times now, but where the assert dominance really comes through is the Enemy fact that Fischek could free. draw attention away from her. And then you have a Ceres Restore Soul to be able to get you back up. If you use it when you're very low in health, you've got effectively a second life if you've got enough support healing coming through. And I think that Fnatic certainly did. One thing does stand out though as well. We can talk about how Fnatic played well. Where was Lazy that game? Not felt very much. I mean, I again, you look at Zinn, and I, I don't really sit there and say that, yeah, that's going to be, you know, a really solid pick for Lazy. I mean, he's played it. He's done well on it. But it's just not one of those things that you consider in the, you know, probably even his top five champions at the moment. And overall, it just didn't really seem to fit the draft. I mean, who are you going to hold down with Spike? You're running Smolder. You're trying to maybe assassinate one of the supports, I assume, is what you're going for. But you're dealing with a Saras who and has Shadow Travel, yeah. and Janus is just going to Void Grip you as soon as you use your world. And that's also the benefit, though, of having double support, because if a Genos does get, you know, chased into... Oh, Saris no, I'm can... being healed. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. I mean, As I run away, and I'm very hard to hit. Yeah, Saris is really good at it again, because if you have that initial line of sight, you can then break it, and your heal will still stay channeled. So all of that adding together is just, again, going along with that survivability that we continue to see in clutch moments. So it's just really interesting to see how this draft continues to change, how the bands continue to progress, and... A lot of these seem to be going at the moment for this matchup in particular with the Shaolin ban we saw last time with the Talus ban here and of course Makoa because he's Makoa. It goes to show that there's comps in mind when these champs that are kind of strange to us are getting banned and it's working out. I mean, both times the Shaolin gets banned from NIP, they win it 4-2. Fnatic bans out the Talus, you see what just happens there. This feels like it's going to be a real flip-flop load though. I'm getting a bit of a, a flashback to what we saw with Nocturnes going on in the previous set where as soon as you go into your map pick, you gain control, and they're not easy games being fought here no. so far. No, Ninjas and Pajamas in game one wrestled control away from Fnatic and vice versa. Mm, and yeah, that, and that's again going to show, and we were talking about this when the first semifinal was going on. It, there's not big gaping holes in any team that's still around in these tournaments. Even throughout most of the day today, there's not these, oh, well, this team is clearly better than, the, than that team. It comes down to when there are these little tiny mistakes can your opponent actually punish you fully for it and then continue that momentum? That's what we're seeing in these games and why they're so back and forth. Map three then will be Serpent Beach. So we're going back to basic shift. And it feels like we've seen pretty much nothing but basics so far from both squads. You know, we've got the Frozen Guard opener. We've now seen Jaguar Falls. Serpent Beach is a map that, God, these teams have such a history on. And we've seen definitely how much of an impact Podo's buck has had 
across multiple teams across months and maybe over years at this point so on this map. There's a lot of things that happen on this map, and that's what makes this, I think, probably the Wild West of maps when it comes down to it, because you can see things like Pip, you can see things like Grover. Obviously, characters like Bomb King are super successful here, but also Drogos' can do really well. Maeve, Maeve Evie, exactly. anything that can get up above you. It's really tricky. We saw a great Androxus as well, played by Nocturnes in the previous set on this map. And at the same point, as you take a look at how you start to deal with that flank pressure, you know, I would be surprised, I think, to see an Ash come out on this map. Just because there's so many different directions that she could take damage from. And she, again, does struggle it's without difficult. the ultimate. Yeah, it, it's, it really is for an Ash to stay on point or even help out with those flanks because of how vertical the map is. The one advantage you do have as Ash is that your shot does go relatively long and you can sort of poke people out above corners, but. If you're only hitting them in the peripheral of your AoE, you're dealing minuscule amounts of damage. Really what you turn into is a cauterized application machine. Mm -hmm. Now, it is important to note that this is no bad thing. Applying cauterized, especially with an AoE shot to multiple opponents, is a great thing. The problem is right now, when I look at what can provide anti-heal in the champion draft and what's been popular so far, I'm looking to Talos, who can activate their overdrive yeah, as with Antediluvian in their loadout, spray across an entire crowd. You've got Brand as Fernando. There are just straight up objectively better choices at this point. I think we're going to be going back more towards the Stagala, the more mainstay picks, but NIP recognize what Cybate's been doing more recently. <laughs> they do end up banning the Ruckus to start off, Makoa to respond. Bucks open. I would not be shocked to see NIP go for it first and Here's like clockwork, up. locked in for Purdo. Couldn't call that one any better, Box. Props up, props up. But again, you look at Ruckus, and it's not just the ability of Cy, uh, you know, Cybe to play him, but also his ability to get a big frontline body up in the air and on those big contested high ground spots that we see specifically throughout the payload push. And so that's a really smart bet if you're NIP. Team. If you're not going to want to first like pick it, you might as well get rid of it. Me and, and of course, Nando coming out as well for the side of Fnatic. And a, again, a good point presence in the Bomb King. I was going to say, this is a solid map for Bomb King. He usually wins those early pokes over by that sewer waterfall side, and that's what we're going to be looking for him to do here. This gives the opportunity for NIP to respond, potentially with a generous pickup, potentially with a neutral frontliner pickup as well. If they go for Inara, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Maldamba prioritized, however, just because the healing throughput is so much more beneficial. But Genos augments Buck so much better and really works out on this map when flanks are busy chasing targets. So NIP have some options. They could go for Torvald here as well for the extra augmentation. Talos is open, but it will be the granddaddy themselves, the big old gauntlet. Fox, if I didn't know any better, you, I figured that you were picking these teams for these guys. I'm reading the script, man, and I've seen <laughs> these teams draft time and time again at this point. It just comes down to a mathematical game between them. They're looking for a little edge here. They're looking for a flavor pick, but neither one wants to give something up first. NIP drop neutral. Fnatic, they drop strong, but they don't drop anything outlandish. And I'm wondering if they do go into something like a Talos here, who's going to play it and what maybe the rest of their call would be? Would you leave your last pick open for counterplay? Do you go for something again with frontline? What are the options on the table, Shit. I think the fact of the matter is that there are so many champions that are viable in this map that you want to leave that last pick up to that flex choice, whether you want to go with something out of this world or something a little bit more stock, it's just safe to do. So Talos coming out with the Damba here. Again, nothing really all that surprising at the moment. It's a lot of good poke and prod as you have the Bomb King Talos that can really shred through a lot of health pulls pretty quickly. Shut down them. a lot of healing as well. Again, we talked yeah. about this so many times, but we can't understate how valuable that is. And NIP, they're in a difficult situation. The one big saving grace right now, as we see Drogos hovered, is that isn't a great deal of anti-air pressure for Fnatic. So NIP can draft me. into this Drogos relatively for free. The last pick is available for a frontliner if they want it. Genos is tough to heal up with a solo Inara, but that's reliable at this point. And the point control is very valuable that you can get incrementally with the Stagala on this map. I wouldn't be surprised to see Maeve come out and run the solo Fernando. It's going to be a Leon instead. Okay, so it is a solo Fernando. And In the reason game, why, you, you know, I, you I think this is okay is, is no simply because ground. you're dealing with a Torvald and an Inara who are very easy to read where they are, and you know they're not going to be able to be there to help out and the appeal. they can't close the gap to the objective Ex Yeah, exactly. Either. Now, the big thing that I'm looking at right here is Leon has a lot of very specific damage. I would have maybe more objectively liked to see the Maeve, um, but potentially looking... <laughs> 
as we do see Golden what Boy face? pulling the what face there as well with a bag of what looks like flaming hot Doritos. This is really how we get through. Fueling Coffee you. and Doritos. Uh, you got to have the fuel to be able to get you through some of these sets, but I like the Leon here. May would have been a great disengage tool for maybe a Buckwild engagement or a Drogo's ult, but specifically, I'm looking towards Leon and the flavor pick. This is a champion that Cybate loves. Yeah, it absolutely does. And that is... I think if you go to their player profile on Haldensworld.com, if you can find that now, if somebody can get a link for that up, I think it was listed as Cybate's favorite champion at the time we did those bios. Interesting, that'd be interesting. And really likes precision as a legendary as well. Goes for a lot of 1v1 duels. It's a style constant play. Constant damage, constant right. damage, it's yeah. It, it's shot, 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 shot. Grace reload spray in there as well at some point. Valus, Grace again, and just consistent damage output, which turns Leon into a shredding machine. Well, we'll see if Leon gets her dinner of champions. Golden Boy's got his at hand. Can Leon find the same thing here? Maybe not Doritos and coffee, but you gotta do what you gotta do. He is a global treasure and national icon. That's what gets you there. Tell me wrong as well. It's actually Alacrity with the other way around. Up by Cybate. I'm terrible. At this. I really like this. Fnatic with Alacrity <laughs> Leon running the quarter eyes very early on. They've got natural anti heal built into two wow. of the loadouts so far Four, of their team. Three, and then running two, Alacrity. Alacrity. One. Ninja in the pajamas. How are they gonna heal through, well, anything at this point. They need to find a way to make sure that bird stays safe, number one, so that healing could potentially come out. And you can again see, actually, the opening salvo is the first overall ability used on that high ground battle that we normally see. And that's actually going to allow Nara to get to point. And that's where she's going to stand up for the moment while Torvald helps out with this little poke and prod battle that we're seeing on the perspective right-hand side for NIP. Fnatic still kind of vying for position using this kind of tug-of-war area. And... It is 36% for NIP before Nara has to back up. That's the value of a Nara, right? It's a chip capture coming through one second out of combat as well. Janos heal goes down, and that's a lot. Just a quick note, it's strange, I think, to see Lazy using combustible Drogos as they get wow. deleted by Fish Echo here. Worm Jets would have got them out of the stun range. And yeah, that sure would have. And ooh, it looks like Maldava's going to be able to survive that one. Fractions of HP available. Now Fish Echo going to get the reload. And not hitting those sticks. And whoa! -oh. Oh, one more. That was it. dangerous. That was very, very close. A couple more seconds. And Torvald actually has a surprisingly good 1v1 versus most champions because he's got a high health pool. He got recharged for effectively 4,000 additional shield health during those fights. But no, it just doesn't matter. And Fnatic, despite losing out on a bit of chip capture early, have taken 54%. Cybate has been sitting on this perspective left hand side for Fnatic all game so far just kind of poking and make sure nobody can get up on their high ground for a free. Nice! I mean, it's coming through, trying to find that kill on the Genos. He will have to back up. Bugsy, meanwhile, finding a counter kill on the Lazy. So Fnatic with 78% does have a 5 on 4 as they try to convert this point. Got to be careful here. Sheepa can lock them down. Nullified was used. That cooldown no longer available, but worth it to get a kill on Cy, but it doesn't matter. Wow. Fnatic take control of the objective. NIP are too busy dealing with peripheral kills to focus on the point. That's the third time we've seen NIP just engage a fraction too late, and those are those little moments when you come down to to, you know, what is costing potential full games. It's moments like that where they're not able quite to touch in time, just a slight mistiming, not able to even contest for it. And again, they get the kills at the back end of it, but not for much value. Now, the one thing that I do like here about Lazy's combustible pick, hold that thought, look at Bugsy's positioning right here. What are they going for, Shift? He's trying to deny this upper ground as much as possible. He knows that Drogos is going to try to be moving on this side of the map, and it looks like he will try to scout it out. And we'll actually have a nice little line of sight onto Anara, who's kind of out here by herself, and able to use that travel back. Perdo's going to be looking uh -oh. for that chase, and Torvald's here as well. Nice conversion from NIP to know where the positioning of that rune would be. Bugsy falls. So does Fish Echo, potentially, if Fish Echo stays around this area. Uh -oh, Gordon yeah. has got a kill to Perdo. Beautiful Snake Toss does land through, and look at the shield here now from Feel, forcing a way into this entry point, buying space for the payload. High ground, Bomb King versus Drogos. Oh, Only one comes out on top. There is one Blaster Monarch in the realm, and their name is Fish Echo. That's going to be a battle I want to keep a tab on as far as who's winning that 1v1, because I think that they're both going to be going at each other pretty often, so tally one for Fish on that one. I'll try to keep track of that as best as possible as we move forward. So I'm able to find a kill there on the Nard. It's a really big setup it's again for this offense. Double stun. That's yeah. huge as well. Chain reaction almost lands through, but Sheepa narrowly saving uh, Lazy's life right there. Feel will answer back, though, and Nara places an impasse wall up as well. And Fnatic are pushing for free right now. Feel oh. is buying a lot of time. Dreads up and disengage if necessary through time oh. and space. Gets the kill. Was that necessary, though? I think it's absolutely necessary. The Immortal was in a good spot, and a Dread Serpent could have been used to try to get him out the rest of the way. Instead, it's the through time and space that converts the kill on the field, and Ball of Fnatic will just end up kind of grouping back up together and retreating back, trying to find a way to regroup and give this one more go. We're about 30 seconds to overtime. Payload about 90% of the way there. 
I think Lazy just knocked, just knocked potentially Fish Echo up onto the high ground there. Combustible right. fire spits. You've really got to be careful you. where you place them. It's a lot of ground to make up for Fnatic. They do have all five back and relatively full HP, but... Hello, this is the Drogo's elevator. Which floor is your stop? <laughs> Take this damage on the way up, if you would. Ten seconds in remaining as our third commentator will politely count down for us. And it looks like Fnatic will be able to contest, at least marginally. A lot of poke happening back and forth. No death as of yet, so still five on five action. I love Fish Echo's positioning here. Got to be Capital Poto coming through. Oh, trap on the ground. Good protection for the time being. Sheepa tries to engage. Grumpy Bomb by space. One, two sticks, but no kill on the Sheepa. This could be very dangerous for Fnatic's Fish Echo. Protection onto Buck as well. Trying to duel out. Will recovery come through? And Fish Echo gets the worst of that trade. Fnatic are in a lot of trouble as the kills start to come on through. But the old drops away. Perdo's able to find Jared, though. That's a really big pick. That's going to be the big tell of making sure NIP gets that. Because with that frontliner being down, with Field being gone, there's opportunity for NIP to really push through. But, and that was the case. A really good setup there for the defense. Not really giving much ground away. How does Bird have zero deaths at this point? Shift. We're tied up it's one to one. It's five minutes and 30 seconds coming through. And Janos has not been played at all. But look at this play from Sheep yeah, right here. Focuses. Down, Fish Echo in the air, nullify on the field as well. Just making sure they try and save their teammates and get the frags where possible. But Sheepa, so far in HRX, win loss rush, uh, re record with Max is 9 and 1, and pretty decent average damage for an off tank player. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, Torvald might not be the sexiest champion to play when it comes to getting noticed, at least, but also the most clutch champion. And when you do make the plays, you do get those big saves, they really do account. And you're going to see that actually opening damage coming onto Lazy's way. But again, that opening burst not really finding much. Fnatic playing very patiently over here. Yeah, Lazy's got to be careful. Dragon Punch engage. They saw Fernando come on in, but you've got to watch out for the incoming. Oh, teleconfrontation on the fish go there. Doesn't actually dive into the big knot of enemy players and gets out alive. That is unusual. But still at the same point, it takes away the... The big Bomb King choice, I mean, that's a lot of damage that's not going to be there for the point. It's going to allow now Inara to sit on point for free. She's got up to 70 plus percent on the point. Thiel's going to have to contest, and that's going to put him in a really bad spot. True Power is going to try to follow up just to find some damage in the back line. Bomb King also here with the King Bomb. What will it find? The answer seems to be not much, as the Dread Serpent also being used there. The point does trade hands at least, and Sheepa does fall. Now make that two as Bonker also dropping away. No front lines for NIP. 1v1, make that a 2v1 up on the high ground. Fish Echo was able to pop you one way. Can they survive the healing coming through from Aldamber is good. Gord goes down, and I can't believe this. Pacheco survives. Fnatic could be in control, but look at NIP's capture there on the objective point. They had Inara back there for a second. Lazy rains down damage, misses out on the kill on Talos. Needs to find the Skadrin up here as well. One more shot will do it. That's a killing spree, but it's 84% and 87 for Fnatic. Yeah, and with that chase, Fnatic was able to focus and rotate back to the point. Leon's here, Jarrah's here as well as Steel, and that's going to be a grumpy bomb. Draw to keep everyone away. 93%. Pacheco with a double kill. Looking to put this one back in Fnatic's hands, and what looked to be impossible for Rita at one point in time, there's just too much chase from NIP, and that's going to be Fnatic with the numbers and the point control. They take this one. 2 1 goes the score. This is all Fish Echo's Bomb King right now. Sure, the play is being enabled by Fnatic, but the fact that Fish Echo took the first death, came back into the fight, and was able to impact it so significantly, taking things back from NIP is phenomenal here. Sure, overextension leaves into full, but Shift, talk to me about this young gun's impact on the fight throughout this set. He's doing exactly the role and the job that Fnatic needs him to do, and Props up to both Jared and Thiel for providing a lot of space up front. Again, that's one solo Fernando coming through. Of course, you need extra damage popping, and Bugsy's finding some space to open up. Again, free time to deal damage for the Bomb King. Same thing with Side 8. You know, we're seeing his name pop up the most, but everybody's doing their job so well that it's allowing him to be that all-star that they need. So with one minute and 44 seconds left on the clock, Ninjas in Pajamas are trying to back up for a defense here, retain high ground control. Fnatic need to break the base, and they've got a couple of ultimates available to do so notably Dread7 about to come up as well. How might that break apart this defense? If, if you find this NIP squad with those double frontliners really stacking together, and Dread7 can really, again, provide that space for Bomb King to go in. He only has 300 HP here, although Sheepa does fall, so opportunity starting to brew up for Fnatic and a push, but Lazy shuts down Bugsy, so that flank will not be there, as, again, Fnatic's pushing through this very difficult portion. Fish Echo's gonna go back up top towards the torch room. He's gonna have a nice line of sight and some great angles onto Anara, who's very low. But he's getting healed up, and protection will save their life. 
Torvald goes and puts the pressure on, and Pacheco wisely disengages. This is a very much a dance of a game right now. It's back and forth. You move, I rotate around. Fnatic aren't giving up too much ground on defense or offense, though, and NIP are holding very carefully to uh -oh. the high ground specifically here. Oh my gosh, that was incredible positioning here for Bugsy. He's able to find Lazy. That's going to open things up. What else will be used to try to push that? There's the Dread Serpent, but again, ooh, the, the Lightman not able to connect Hallelujah. on the bird. So as there's still numbers here, there's a couple of vaults that Fnatic could use to come back. Really importantly as well, Bird's able to actually heal up the front line there from inside the cart. The front lines are still alive for NIP, but for how much longer? Fischako is forced out. Jera stays alive and heals the team up. Side bait does find cheaper as well. The cart is still in contest by Thiel with 20 seconds to go shift. Oh, and this is an interesting spot because Anara is falling very low. Thiel trying to put the focus into the Stone Warden. Mother's Grace doing its job, though, but Fish Echo and Bugsy also does theirs for two kills. Thiel does end up going down, but so does Bogger. Hyper Beam has to be used. Oh, oh look no. at this spot for Fish Echo. Oh, my gosh. The Torvald Poppy Bomb. Snips it up, and the Poppy Bomb is just not enough. Will they be able to sustain the defense, though? I think the respawn proxy advantage at this point is in favor of NIP. Too far. Overtime is ticking down, wow. but Shift, I cannot believe it. Fish Echo almost made the hero play there, but... Why be a hero shift when you can be a champion and NIP hold on steady? I see what you did there. Uh, this is so, what would you call that? It's not a back door. Is that like it's going through the mud room? Is that the side door? It's a str <laughs> I, I, honestly, it's not a. I can't really call it a back door play. It's not a front door play either because you're not <laughs> bursting apart the enemy team. That's like going through the cat flap at that point. You're just like ninjuring into the house. You're like, oh, there's, there's an opening here. I'll go through the window, I guess. Kind of seems like a scene from Inside Man. This fish should go just kind of hiding in trying to keep himself there, and as you look through this loadout, it's interesting choices coming out. What'd you notice? You know, I really like stomping ground here specifically because it gives Poto a lot more 1v1 potential. You dive in, you get a kill, you get your, your cooldowns two, reset overall by a specific one. percentage, so that's more recoveries overall, but it is very dependent on you getting specifically the kill there. See if those kills do come out for Perdo as we're on, still on board with him, looking for this left hand side for them. Seismic Crash comes out and oh, nice channel on the King Bomb, but it's not enough as Perdo goes buck wild, able to take down one, but he gets traded away. Ninjas in pajamas though on the point, 33%, and Anara has to back out. Bugsy is right on Anara's tail. Oh, what a good protective shield though, won't be enough. Not quite. Thiel burns down Bonker once again. I think that Bugsy is using a chainsaw as their weapon right now because that's what that weapon feels like. You get up close and personal and you just start to shred through everything, cutting down all foes in your past and NIP got some early cap control but now look at Fnatic. Able to push forward as Bugsy and finds himself not one but two and he's still back here. His team might actually just push up to help him but Perdo will chase him down. The blitz upper not enough to get him out of that sticky situation. 93%, 96. Oh, Buck has grumpy. the touch and he's going to get absolutely destroyed by those sticky bombs and that grumpy combo. What a good anticipatory play from Fishiko. Nara is trying to move in. Fishiko does retreat in enough time. Grumpy goes out again. Here's true power from Talos. Who is it going to lock down the back line? Lazy, Lazy Dragon no. Punch. Focus down. Fnatic get the oh, objective. Sime. That must have been a Gracer or Valor shot as well. Beautiful mid air kill. FNC Fnatic. They are looking so dominant. So we're going to get the full team wipe in rapid fashion overdrive going right through all the traffic sitting in the back line and what a smart play to track down lazy a little bit of salty tears there as the dragon punch not quite able to connect side eight getting that final kill and now again ultimate still favorite fanatic here end up pay used a lot trying to get that point back chip i'm getting visions of the future right now you know what i'm seeing hmm. talisman well, we'll have to take a look. You've been calling it so far. Bugsy once again tracking it at medium range as well with the overdrive, finding Lazy again. And as you move through again, the rune being placed and see if he gets how aggressive he decides to get. He's going to find Bonker. Here's the overdrive once again. He's got Fish Echo with him. Can they take her down? It will be. Anara drops, but Bonker able to at least get some kind of respite as Fishiko also drops away. Meanwhile, look at Thiel around the outside. Actually went up to the high ground through almost a backdoor play for NIP. And as the payload oh. goes into conversion, Dread Serpent is ready here. Jera goes back a little bit, recognizes the respawn to start to come back through. One minute and 20 seconds left. The clock and Fnatic are almost winning this game. They are barely inches away from taking a one game advantage in this set. But here's a big hyper beam. Dread Serpent interrupts it. Will that be enough? Lazy gets caught out. Cybate is here. Enlightenment could be used. Oh, but big shots. the grace is just up the spray in rotation as well. Bird is sent flying. Fnatic get the victory in game three. Do not rule out the damage dealing potential of, of Fnatic. Uh, Fnatic. You know, I have to go back and eat some of my words and kind of make amends for, you know, saying Fnatic did not look so great early on in their tournament, not playing that well as a team. They the were only... doing a lot of damage, to be fair. And that was the thing. They is... weren't 
getting the kills that mattered. And the stuff after the stuff wasn't great. And now Bugsy's doing nothing but the stuff after the stuff, whilst the rest of the team is doing the stuff. I don't know what kind of a puzzle you're putting together here, Vox, but I'm not buying it. I, 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 you know what? I've been eating a lot of food today. I'm very stuffed myself. And oh gosh, so far, I mean, these players have been hungry. They've been ravenous. Remember, folks, this is the second semi-final set of the day. Winner of this goes through to the Paladins World Championship Grand Finals on the main stage tomorrow. And the loser, they go home. And that would be not so great for either of these teams. We're seeing a pretty historical run from Fnatic. I got a prediction for you, Shift. Okay, let me European hear. one wins. You know what? That's a good call is the last three teams alive are all European. You're good. This is like the old, you know, team Sorry, in the black did, and the orange uh, cool, a little, back, a little bit back to Bird's tweet last year about Worlds. Is somebody call an ambulance? Because all I'm hearing is EU, EU, yeah. EU. <laughs> Fnatic, though, I mean, again, you, you take a look at their ability to deal damage, and it's been uh, pretty... Uh, Underestimated at times, it yeah. feels like. I don't know about that necessarily, but the fact of the matter is that it literally does carry them through even the toughest of situations. And that's, again, just big shout-outs to two of these new players coming in with all the veterans that are on stage. I mean, literally, again, like I mentioned, eight of these guys have been playing since essentially the Inception launch tournament that's been happening. And coming right back into the scene in a very prevalent way is Cybate and Fish Echo here. They certainly have, and led alongside... So many great names in Paladin's history right now. And again, it's just the adaptation of Fnatic really just never ceases to surprise me. And they're doing the same thing that they do at LAN, that this squad, the core at least, has done at LAN before, which is, you know, go in, kind of maybe not play up to people's expectations initially, and then figure out their opposition and start to dismantle them in this situation. But drafting so far from Fnatic has been really the highlight of this tournament for me. The plays have been excellent. We've seen some great ninja work from Bugsy's Talus in the last game as well. But yeah. really, it's the drafting that's enabled that. It really has been. And I think you look back to you know, what we identify with the old D69 crew, a very stubborn-minded team that we know what's good, and we're just going to keep doing it until it works. Similar story here. For Fnatic, the ash that comes out, I mean, in weird situations. You know, we took the deal in that interview early on with Space Station said we wanted to come out with the solo ash. That was our strat coming into this, and it really didn't work against the Brazilians, and they're still sitting here saying it's still working in some ways, and that's just one of those flavor picks that we've seen really kind of, again, elevate Fnatic through this loser's bracket. I mean, sometimes this. trash, I think, is how we can describe that. It works when it works, and when it doesn't, well, it kind of really, really doesn't. Kind of reminds you of a not go there. I was going to say a bad garbage disposal. What is that analogy shift? Go home. Sounds like me. <laughs> no, I'm not just garbage. I'm hot garbage. I'm the equivalent of Fernando, but, you know. Keyword word is hot, though, Fox. Yeah, I uh, feed hard or die trying, as I always like to say. <laughs> NIP, though, they were They're quiet. They very much are. You can see that player cams right there on the front of these wonderful LED panels on the expo stage here. And, I mean, some of the players are looking around, but there's not much chatter back and forth. Fnatic, they're all stood up. They're all grouped, they're all talking back and forth between the team, making sure that they're all on the same page, everybody's comfortable, and whilst NIP are having a conversation here, it's not really flowing very much. It's like, okay, well, this happened, let's pick it up, let's move it along. Yeah. I'm not sure this is a sign That's, of low morale, but... It's always been the staple of these guys, though, specifically when you look at, you know, Bird and Lazy and Bonker, even back to HRX last year. They, I mean, these two teams, really, in particular... You know, there's not a lot of banter going back and forth. They're very re well respected in the community. You don't see them, you know, trying to start anything on social media. They're just all really calm, collected dudes, and it's just a gentleman's. It's a gentleman's game here in the semifinals. I'd say, bloody one, but still a gentleman's game. There's a bit of back and forth. I think we can say that this is um, ranging into mild fisticuffs currently. Yeah, you. Yeah, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. Getting slightly British here, in fact. And there is actually one, at least UK-based player right now in the crowd or in up on the stage, and that is David Fischeko. I'm going to probably butch this surname. Kosadinov, if I'm not mistaken. Map number four, though, is already Splitstone Quarry, the location where it will be. Shift, one of the last chances in the tournament. Do you think we'll see a Willow? <laughs> I don't think we're going to see a Willow. Is it very um, Stop unlikely? It. Stop it. You're making me flutter. Did I do it? You got me. Ah, I got him. Straight got back Got a knee again. slap out of Vox. Mission accomplished, fam. We can go home. We can... Uh, no, let's well, not. Let's, no. let's watch these games. definitely got more to do. Ooh, <laughs> look at that as well. European representation, but I've got the NA flag still out on the desk. And can't deny the workers. We certainly can't. Whilst waiting for the map draft to come up as well, I mean, we've seen such a great showing out of every single region so far that's turned up to land. You know, 
Everybody's exceeded expectations. Nocturnes and Latin America have done that, certainly. And despite G2 taking a loss as well earlier, they, the amount of dedication that these teams have been putting into um, into the game, the amount they care about Paladins, you can see it in all of their oh, faces. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the emotion is incredible. You know, there's that you know iconic symbol when you know D69 loses to China and you see Jared just head in hands, just absolutely demoralized and stunned. You know, we try to romanticize some of these things that happen on screen, but that was a true moment of emotion and one that really sticks in my mind as far as these players go. 2-1 the score, though. Let's get back into it. Map number four, picks and bands coming up. Splitstone's the place. Fnatic carries the lead. NIP, though, going into this one with their map choice. You know what? I think I just figured out, by the way, why Na'Vi likes Splitstone Quarry so much. Oh, gosh, here we go. It's full of rocks, and they've been banging their head against the wall. They're getting really good at splitting rocks. I think I'm stretching there, aren't I? I think you're trying to split hairs with these puns. <laughs> Maybe a little bit there. <laughs> MIP have first pick, first ban. Bomb King off the table. You know, I predicted the Talus, but to be fair, Fish Echo kind of was really, I think, probably the most common word uttered from either of our mouths during that last Are game. Are you not Yeah, I definitely is. Buck can be the first choice here. Again, a lot of versatility on the capture point specifically for Buck. But of course, as that long stretch starts to wind and turn as the payload Time either moves and you're trying to defend it or enemy. push it, there's a couple of cheeky little routes you know that Buck can take to, to kind of surprise you in the back line. And similar conversation for Ruckus with what we anticipate would be uh, at the moment I'm for the moment is the idea of going with the aerial assault. Talos also coming out with it, so it's a lot of consistent damage from both those champs. Yeah, these are two real power picks right now. And the Talos as well, especially, just dissuades NIP from going into anything heavily shield related. Genos picked up. I wouldn't be surprised to see an Inara here at this point. I don't think that NIP will invest too heavily. Fernando has been a mainstay of theirs, actually. So a couple of frontline options. And I think frontline is really the safest choice for NIP right now. Fernando, me. the Immortal, maybe in the face of Hexfire. Just universally a good choice at this point. How do Fnatic respond? This is the fun part of the draft for me, especially on this map, because these are all top tier picks that everyone expects. Now is where things start to shake up, usually. Fnatic's going to have the first chance to potentially throw a curveball the way of NIP. and. We'll see is this how they're they make things interesting. It's maybe a pip, pip in the could uh, be. Well, could the be. certainly lends itself to this map, but third. Fnatic are really going in with this Ash and taking it third Come does on, leave a last fight. pick open, and this raises a lot of questions. I mean, who's going to play who? Thiel obviously on the Ash. We've got Cybate there as well. Jera on the Maldamba. Tells you would expect to, to go to Bugsy, so maybe we might see a last pick. Potentially, Drogo's come in for Fish Echo, or maybe a Grover if NIP go for more snipers. I love the flexibility and the versatility in the draft towards the end. I do too. And again, this is where Fnatic has really been outshining their opponents is those last picks that you just don't expect. And you kind of have to react very last second with potential item pickups or legendary pickups to try to counter that out and give yourself a chance. Maeve coming out. Good, solid double flank for NIP Welcome so far. Streets, kitten. I really do like this, specifically because we've seen in especially map one how strong Cat Burglar can be alongside Luminary here as well. But just, oh, and the Grover as well, That's actually, maybe counter drafting Fanatic a bit, recognizing that last trick was open. I love Midnight in the face of maybe the Drogas, which could be drafted here as Dragon Punch or a Hexify, just anything which is that big channeled, we want to kill you ultimate, and you can completely deny it. And once again, you mandate resilience, which means think how hard Grover will be swinging this game. I'd be interested to see if Bugsy's sitting there in comms saying, give me a sniper, give me a sniper, Yeah. give me a sniper. That's Shotland, that's close enough. That'll My do. Uh, it's not going his battle. way, though. I mean, that's going to be likely so side by. Oh, maybe not. I think Fish Echo at this point. Fish Echo yeah, has yeah, demonstrated yeah, yeah, the yeah. ability to play a mean Shaolin and. Whilst typically Fish Echo has been the flank player for a lot of teams that they've been on previously, notably, I just think that Shaolin will suit their playstyle better here and allow Bugsy to do more of what Bugsy does best. And from the previous game, we can see that that is disrupt the backline as Talus. Let's put these two teams in a vacuum shift. Let's put these drafts up there in space where nobody can hear you meme. And <laughs> who are you giving the edge to here? Well, Not your puns or your jokes, but no, as you take a look, I, I really like NIP here just because, again, there's so many cheeky routes that you can use that Maeve to keep. You don't, you don't have to use the pounds to get there. You can prowl from one side to the other for essentially free. And again, we've seen the bonus damage come out so consistently. And the interesting thing is you don't see a Torvald on screen. It really goes to show, you know, who's able to survive on the flanks more specifically because Genos' burst will be fine if he does end up going with a Celestial Touch, although I don't think we're going to see that. 
And on the flip hand side, Meldamba as well. You know, it's going to have to keep this Talos and Shaolin alive. There's a lot of demand on these supports, I think. And that's going to be, I think, the true telling is that healing stat as we move in further to the game. I only see, you know, honestly one support on here, and that's Meldamba. And that's a bit of a push. I think the Genesis damage right now, Grover is potentially a flank. But Splitstone Quarry is certainly the destination for this next map coming up. There's a map advantage right now to Fnatic. And let's look for the legendary shift. Anything unusual here so far? or? Well, pretty vanilla for me. Well, Cat Burglar coming out once again, Battering Ram as well, and not really much out of the ordinary, as we've seen time and time again. Side bait will go with that Aerial Salt, looking for that pressure from that Bleacher area, or potentially up on those big, long bridges that overlook most of the map. And straight to point we go, Bird and the gang heading to the right side towards those fidget spinners, as we so generously saw last game. And Gonna need some resistance with some shields. They'll back up and try to find a different area. So far, so good. A little bit of chip capture for NIP, but it's six percent, and that's not really anything to write home about. Down from the high ground goes Grover, though. Engagements coming. NIP starting to force their way into Fnatic's territory here. Perdo pushing up very far in advance. Has recovery available. We'll use it now and drops a lot of damage into Thiel, who is slowed and in so much danger. Oh, what a good heroic leap out, though, knowing that Ash is going to get some peel and likely be able to get the battering ram off and. Get some help from his teammates around him. So he backs off 78% for NIP. Fnatic has to kind of scramble to get some positioning back. Like you mentioned it's NIP all over the map so far, and it will be touched, but at least in the meantime, by Ash. But again, we've seen time again how fast she melts and lazy, able to find a long range double knife against Fish Echo for the kill. First blood comes through up in the air. Void Grip Pado sends the old packing. Talos is trying to melt through Sheeper, and Talos is a very good matchup versus Grover, but the numbers advantage just favors NIP right now. Long range axes connect. NIP capture this objective lead one to zero in two minutes. What a pull. Great, yeah, wow. this is this is what you want to see, this overly aggressive push early on when you know there's at least some kind of a stagger. Although Sheepa's in a bit of trouble, doesn't quite get to the doorway in time, but Perdo's there to help out. Deal goes down, look to see this NIP blue team get aggressive. You can see Lazy right here, the planet comes out in the impale arrow. I think he was anticipating to hit that, but it missed, and Lazy gets the better once again of the Shaolin. You just can't rely on your planted when there is literally a plant on the other team shift. Grover is along with green fingers right here. Fnatic are being punished and pushed back, and Splitstone Quarry is a map where there are many opportunities to hold. There's a lot of defensive positioning, but Fnatic's lack of... They've got one long-range damage dealer, and so far it's not being utilized too well as NIP take the fight into the small, confined spaces. And that's the space that you want to deny the defense that advantage when it comes to all these long choke points. In the back line, it's Bugsy. His runa travel is really nearby just next door, in fact, and Lazy finds that kill as Perdo was able to go a lot of the chip damage down, but no one was able to help out Bonker or Sheepa, so that left-hand side that we mentioned previously that was so clutch for NIP gets left back, and that will be where Fnatic makes their return, and they're a little bit of a counter-attack here as they set up their defense nicely. They have all 10 ultimates up to all the players on stage, and again, it comes down to who pulls the trigger first. You know, honestly, I'd like to see NIP pull the trigger here. They've got a lot of ultimates which start to have their FC reduced as items come online. Whirlwind obviously is counted out by Quarter Eyes, Maves, Midnight counted out by Resilience. And so before those really get going, it seems like a good opportunity to use them. Oh no, Fernando loses their life though, put her answers back. Frontliner down for each squad, but NIP are relying on damage now to try and force through. Keep in mind it is a solo Fernando, and there is still a Ruckus on board, so that battle in the trenches should favor Fnatic and that four on four, and it looks like both teams will kind of Agree to have that gentleman's game, or no, we'll wait for all five before we start going back into it. Heat Haze could possibly be popped. Lazy looking for something on the, again, left-hand side for him, perspectively, as he tries to find uh -oh. Fish Echo, but not able to find the shots there. Takes a lot of poke, and is forced completely out of the fight right now as well. Very low on health, regenerating out of combat, whilst the rest of the healing is throughput onto Ninjas in Pajamas core. Here comes the whirlwind, here comes Buck Wild. Ash says, halt, let's fight. Sub-8 tries to retreat. Can Birdo find the oh. kill? One more shot will do it. Recovery to the high ground. Maldamba under fire. Jarrah in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, and there's a lot of damage coming through from NIP. Sheep has got a nice angle as well, taking over this little enclosed mine area. But, oh, the planet. He's trying to dodge and weave. They trade one for one. But all five players for Fnatic go down. NIP is able to walk that one in. That last little battle between Fish Echo and Sheep was all that there was left for Fnatic. And unfortunately, for the boys in red, it's not going to go their way. A 2-0 lead early on on Splitstone of all maps for NIP. And with ultimates left in the tank as well, only two exhausted during that time. You know, Fischeko is making a good job of defense here and found some really clutch Impaler Arrow as well on the planted tracking to be able to lock down certain picks, a lot more on the interior spaces, but it wasn't enough. And that seemed to be a, a situation where Fnatic got taken rather by surprise. Yeah, they did. And again, you look at that moment there for Fnatic 
They know how important it is on that, what we can see would have been that Five, right side, right around four, that corner, trying to keep three, that mine area two, in their favor. And one. they kind of lose sight of where Sheepa moved over to the left. And that op this is a huge angle for, again, the Grover to continue to throw out those axes and punish everyone who comes in his line of sight. No, quick observation as the fight starts off as well. Fnatic not going into resilience, which we said was maybe mandated. This means that Midnight is going to last forever. Haven was the name of the game Another instead three. for this Shaolin. Try to survive versus Maeve, but... Just not happening. True power coming out looking for a target, but looks like it did get canceled, canceled or didn't find a target or something in time as he retains 75%. So again, he's going to get that charge right back up with an overdrive right to the frontliners. Nice dread serpent coming up. Bugsy finds Sheepa, but Lazy's still here to trade the kill. Hex to fire straight into an immortal. Nice retreat, but is it enough? It looks like it just may be as Fnatic's able to find some peel. Bonka does end up going down there. Fnatic do have some peel. They do have control of the map right now, and they do have capture boost in effect. For those of you watching at home, that is 4% per in-game tick rather than the normal 3% on a neutral footing and now it's 74% and climbing very quickly. NIP, I don't feel like they got a way back in now. They've got Bunker on the objective. They've got to find big kills here and big picks, but Talos has true power again. That'll be a lockdown. Oh, but Bug's trying to find Thiel. Nice! Void Grip to keep Thiel from using that battering arm. It's a big kill. Bird's on point. Trying to make sure that at least stays in overtime and that's what they'll find. Bugsy does clean up two more though and Fernando on the point is pretty much by himself. Infilla arrow connects but not against the wall, but it does not make a difference. Fish Echo finding that kill. It's just, again, the 1 HP Fernando. Let's see if they try to touch. Oh, nice Impale Arrow. It keeps Bruno off the point. Capture goes to Fnatic. Double kill for Saibane and knockback. So good right now. Fnatic do hold themselves in here. And again, catch a boost really lending itself towards Fnatic to be able to take advantage of that. But hats off to Bugsy for the double kill there as well. Finding their way into the back lane once again and just making sure that NIP are thoroughly disrupted and so many of their members very vulnerable to the damage output of the Skadron here as they are not tanky at all. Yeah, not much at all. And you can see Lazy again is just trying to find some poke. And uh, this is the tough spot in the map for him to really try to decide where to position. Bonker gets caught out. And, oh, Impaler arrow against the wall. It's a lot of damage going Purdue's way. He'll try to roll leap away. And it looks like Grover will actually step in front of that arrow very fortunately as it looks like be pretty close to at least on track to that retreating buck. And Lazy again falling out. I'm not really sure what he was looking for there. He jumped into about three different people wearing red. And it's not going to bode well for the Mave. Doom is what Lazy was looking for there. And maybe a respawn, maybe a mid-round buy, but I don't think that's an intentional suicide. One minute and 28 seconds on the clock shift. This is looking like a repeat of what we saw last round of Fnatic closing the gap very fast, and they're sitting on Dread Serpent, they're sitting on Hexify here. Big base-breaking ultimates, and Field stays alive with the damage reduction from their legendary. Uh-oh, careful, Fernando falling very low. Can they get him healed up in time? Talos also very low. Perdur, Perdur's milling blood in the water. Will able to take out one. Looking for the second, but it looks like the one-for-one one trade is all it will be, so it's still just kind of stalling out a four-and-four four action. 60 seconds left until overtime that payload just narrowly rounding that last corner, but it will retreat just a small bit until someone from Fnatic touches it. And this is a situation where with all ultimates on the table at this point, Fernando 94%, 95 a good fireball will probably have them back up at 100%. There's an engagement choice going on here, but Perdo falls before anybody can respond. No trade from NIP just yet. Assert oh. dominance cancelled out by Void Grip, slams the flag on down. Let's go to war, says Thiel. And looking for those kills again. Bonker would be the big target. Nice little blossom there from Sheep and trying to keep him up. Hexafire in the back line, but it gets countered out, but still kills coming out. Here's a big moment as it's going to be just up to everybody but the frontliners to try to hold this one off for NIP. That's just the buck and the Genos planted in the face of it might just be enough Birch trying to stall tie with a stellar wouldn't he's actually doing a pretty good job until fish echo has something to say about it Maeve is here nine lives reset, but it doesn't matter Bugsy's tracking is too good bonk guy here punched away shield up the time being. Here. Immortal is available might be used as overtime is ready sheeper is back as well And there we go. There's the immortal the survivability comes in Bugsy has true power available fanatic and oh, jumping no. around the anti-heal Anti-diluvian too good and fanatic tie things up. Wow, what an incredible play. I thought for a second near that tail end, Fnatic wasn't going to have enough HP pull left to get that one through with that respawn proximity, but I'll be surprised. Bugsy, what an incredible display of just mechanical gameplay on Talos. Again, he's been the big kind of question mark coming into this land. Will he be able to get onto these kind of hot picks as the tournament progresses? The answer as of the last 48 hours has been definitively yes. So far, so good then. FNC time things up. I feel like they hold the ultimate advantage there from what we saw previously as well in a good position to look for a neutral capture objective one's fallen the way of each team so far but with only one frontliner online bonka one seven and ten right now and wreck is starting to come online bugsy shredding the shield so fast 
What do you end up doing here, Shift? It's just really difficult. Uh, flat out, that's what it comes down to. And we saw it happen with Wardium on the G2 side of things. When you're the solo frontliner, so much relies on you. Night Midnight came out for alone, oh, didn't actually fully go off mm. as Fish Echo found the kill shortly before Lazy was able to trigger that ultimate. Ash going to run on back and very wisely so finds himself a Meldama for the heal. And now we're back on to point. 9% for each team. Fnatic has control here of the map, but no one's standing on point. Finally, Thiel will do it. Mad Knight comes out as well again. Fischeko in a lot of trouble here. Bonka finds one kill. Cybate maneuvering round, but has been spotted out. Could be focused down easily and must use their advanced charges to try and get away from this incoming Grover. Buck says here's the windup from the high ground. Choose through Thiel. This player is here to... Quad Bullock and Chew Bubblegum, and I think they're all out of gum at this point. Sure seems that way. 57% for NIP as they Killing retake three. the control and actually get a staggered kill there on the Bugsy, so that flank pressure not there. Fish Echo is actually planning up, so that sound cue might be enough for Perdot to find it, and that will be the case. He will just poke and prod, though. He doesn't want to get impaled against the arrow. But, oh, Bunker able to follow right back on Dread Server on the point, but there's really not too many players in Fnatic here. True power will be enough for Bugsy to get in there. He finds a good target. That's Bird who falls. Doesn't even use overdrive in the process, and now this is bad news for Bong. Hexafire is here. Cybait ready to hit it if necessary, but it shouldn't even be as Bugsy finds two in a row. Lazy does answer back. 93% for Ninjas in Pajamas, 72% for Fnatic, and Cybait's trying to chase down onto Poto. Can't quite get the kill. So close. Somebody's got to engage from NIP. Will it be Poto just jumping in for the heroic save? Oh, it will be actually Bird who looks to touch just in time. 99% for Fnatic. Whoa. No dangerous jump near those death traps on the map, but it looks like it's not going to be enough to even get this contest going through. Fnatic find themselves four kills. It's just Maeve left alive, and that's not going to be enough. She does clean up one more kill, but regardless, the damage has been done. Fnatic go up 3-2 and clean up the last kill. And the problem seems to keep on being that two things happen. One, Ninjas in Pajamas leave their back open to Bugsy, who is really relishing the opportunity to take advantage of that. You know, you can't leave your Janus alone when there is true power on the board. And two, too little, too late. Once again, they have the opportunity to touch, and it ends up being your support that goes in and ends up dying as a result. It's a nice idea, though. Again, Bird, all he wanted was the overtime. He didn't really want to fully contest it, so he just touches and comes right back out. Again, Stellar Wind not really cancelable by anything besides some kind of a stun. Nothing of that found it. Killstreaks online for Fnatic, though. One of them being on Ash, which is a good change of direction for that frontliner and Fish Echo now looking for a plan and won't be able to get the connection for the stun so we'll plan up and then immediately cancel looking to help out with the Mave on the top hand side. Bugsy's here though and they will actually be able to combine for a kill so a big opening five on four. Payload's already moved about 75% of the way. Bonka's contesting in a bit of a cheeky spot in the corner right now but is retreating towards the rest of the team as members of Fnatic start to charge down this lane towards conversion. Thiel lands the pincer and Cybate cleans up and look at Thiel's ability just to harass from range here. This and without a frontliner, this is very, very strong. Yeah, that ability to use the kinetic burst and any kind of displacement is huge for Ash. She does not quite have the assert dominance. 98% will eventually get it. There it is. One minute and seven seconds. A lot of ultimates. Heat Haze being used. What else might be dropped here? Bird does fall. So an opportunity. Dread Zipper comes out. Fnatic might just push this through. There's no way for them to contest. Assert dominance wow. slams the flag down home. And Fnatic have brought war to NIP's doorstep. Game four goes to FNC. Black and orange are the colors on screen. And they're one game away from advancing through to our finals. I... It, would not have expected Fnatic to make this kind of a run. This is absolutely incredible to see again that resilience that this squad has brought to it. The coaching that happens from the experienced veterans like Thiel, of course, Bugsy and Jera as well. I mean, bringing these newer additions to the roster as of this fall season going to the winter up to speed and NIP is just ready to go. I mean, I, this is a no-nonsense team and they are still locked into those monitors looking for some way to turn this back in their favor. It's, not looking so great at the moment. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Fnatic looking relatively relaxed. I mean, you've got Cybate up there drinking from the water bottle, just refueling at the time being. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Cheaper may be more concerned. Bonka as well, not looking too happy there. The MVP of last HRX Invitational in 2017, uh, actually. It's very weird to think that's a whole year ago, Shift. Whole year, I know. It's a long time ago. Feels like yesterday. Not quite. Yesterday was a long day. Doesn't feel like yesterday. So it looks like uh, you know, the players still consulting with one another, and it seems like they're opting to not take any kind of a break in between. Just want to ride this momentum through, and NIP just all business, wanting to get right back at it. Again, just going to show that this is, uh, it's its 9 to 5 somewhere in the NIP world. It's just all business at the moment. Hmm. Last chance saloon right now. We said that uh, 
you know, Split Zone Quarry, their map of choice. Ninja and Pajama's draft was good, but Fnatic have got problems once again. It, it's it's an interesting thing, right? You ban the Bomb King, you take away Fish Echo's prime pick that did so much work, and then you leave Talos open, and look what Bugsy does for two games in a row now. This is really <laughs> devastating to NIP, and what can they do to outdraft it? You've got to start picking these instead, but Bok has been such a mainstay for a long time. It feels like the roles are reversed right now. Fnatic are being the adaptable ones, NIP, they're not shifting. Buck's win rate has not been what I would call dominating by any fashion. I don't even know if it's positive at this point in time. What's Is it lower than Terminus's? Which, to be fair, is rock bottom. But Terminus has worked a couple of times. Terminus has worked, especially I'm not lights. going that distance with you, Bucks. I'll let you, I'll let you poke and prod at the puns. And... We'll see what we can get there. <laughs> I got a chuckle, and that's all that matters, folks. It's pretty late right now in the Powders World Championship High Res Expo stage for 2018. And for those of you who are still tuning in from all around the world, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Hello, Evan, up on stage as well. And I'm sure you've been enjoying these sets nice and relaxed <laughs> up on here for the casters that have finished for the day, but it's all just business for us here as well. The suits are on, the tie is curiously knotted. Eldritch not you there like it, for shift. I do like it. So you, it's you come down with the wrap. The rap ties, and I, that's always a little flare, a little British yeah. flare. And I had you to come should, back with one of my own. Would you like to go for the Van Wick there? It requires a little <laughs> bit more tie length, and it's pretty interesting. But you know what? This might be able to help at least maybe push towards tying things up. It's Tim and Mills, map number five, and his pajamas are pulling out all the stops here. But I'm concerned about this. This is a sniper map, and think about Bugsy's performance yep. earlier in the day. You said it exactly as I was thinking it. And Man, this is a this is a bold choice being down two maps. It, I think though, again, you look at the veteran experience, you look at NIP, what they're able to do from a flexibility Select standpoint, and I think this map can really open up something strange. That again, Fnatic has been really kind of I won't say quick on the ball when it comes to adapting in game. It's been more of a okay over time. All right, this is a close set. It should have been this close. Here's how we fix it. Can they have those similar? reactions without the full conversations in game because there's going to be some weird stuff that comes out as it usually tends to always do here on Timber Mill. Champion draft will answer at least some of those questions so far, on paper at least, and it is once again Timber Mill ready for both of these teams. One game to the side of Ninjas in pajamas, Fnatic up three looking to claim their victory and a spot in the finals of this year's in the very first inaugural Paladins World Championship of 2018 and just the storylines and the journeys of these players it would be Bugsy actually managing to make it here this year as well oh good point forgot about all that not be able to make it last year yeah facing That's the substitute that replaced him as well yeah. potentially <laughs> unbelievable has already made it through to the finals with Nadas Vincere as well Spunky there as well from the roster that did win last year's what was effectively world at that point NIP though they stick with the bark after banning Ruckus at this point, so leaving Talos on the table. But will the verticality pay off, or the lack thereof, on a map such as Timmermill? Grover establishing their high ground poke first and foremost with the Grover choice. So I think with that coming out, I don't think you're going to be seeing a sniper on the side of Fnatic at least. Uh, I mean, we've seen this is a fun fact. Bugsy has not really played Grover. I don't think he's played Grover at all. I think he played it once. Maybe once. Yeah. He played it three times at the Fall Finals and was three and zero oh on Grover. A lot of those games happening over on Serpent Beach as you we see Genos get locked in and on the here. foot pan side for NIP they're gonna go with some point pressure and that's an Inara who I like Inara a lot in this map it, it, the frontliners is a difficult conversation on Timbermill because again at that I'm point is a straight up funnel they're and you don't have really any opportunity to help out with those high ground battles so why not take someone who can actually reduce that damage with that mother's grace and Inara is probably one of the better frontliners here when it comes to self-sustain I think this will be a solo Inara shift Talos being yeah. drafted, no Wombo combo with Janus as well. There isn't the through time and space combo to walk down a sniper. I, would like, I mean, it's fine to see it. I think this map yeah. is, is totally fine for solo frontliners just simply because a lot of the fighting, as you mentioned, happens on the peripherals. It happens on that. Uh -oh. Yeah, ooh, the giant circumference of the point. Maeve comes out here as well to try to set up some flank pressure for Fnatic. And I'd be left with a few different options then. This is a little bit more difficult. I thought maybe we'll see the lazy Knesset come out again or something like that here with no sniper lockdown available from that Wombo combo. But at this point with Maeve coming out as well, I'm wondering if a Bomb King or something like that might be more suitable here. We know that Trogus is easily picked off, but some AoE damage or some long distance damage at least will come in the form Your of Shaolin Hover and a Shaolin Lock as the Desert Wind joins the roster and lineup of ninjas in pajamas. Yeah, if you're NIP, you need something to, to contest the Grover and Talos and Buck really not are not going to do that. So Shaolin is a very smart pickup, and not only looking for the full snipe battle as 
trying to find a little bit more versatility out of their champion pool and get a little bit more work on the low ground, I imagine, as Shaolin will be good on defense and, of course, offense. Damba locked in as their choice for support. And here it is, an Eevee coming out. So we are going to see the solo front line for each. Grover in the long range, though. I mean, again, he's so dangerous here in what I would consider his hometown with all the trees looming around. And i got to like Eevee on this map specifically. The ability for her to poke and pressure with Wormhole is very, very valuable. She's one of the few champions as well that can potentially sniff out Talus with their Rune of Travel and follow them back as they teleport to safety. Yeah, that blink and as well, of course, the Soar, that really you know, quick moving mobility and a great ability to close in distance quickly. She probably brings, I would say, the most when it comes to that facet of the game. And it's a solid draft for both teams, really, when it comes down to it. Again, it is late here, but we're feeling fresh here on the... On the platform, I guess we'll call it. I wasn't sure what High res box. High res box. High res box not standing on high res box. I am sitting right now. Casters do occasionally have chairs. Casters also are losing their feet in the moment or are losing the feelings in their feet. You feel great? I feel great. Is it the Crocs? I'm not wearing Crocs. I'm sorry. I had to leave that to the console players to so keep rocking that. That might be the secret. Can we get dress Crocs? Is that a thing? Copyright it right now. That sounds like Trademark an abomination. The idea. I do love it. it. Absolutely. Timbermill, map five. One more is the number that Fnatic needs to punch their tickets to the finals. Semi-finals, world championships for Paladins. NIP looking to make a comeback. And also just relatively standard and relatively vanilla in terms of legendary choices so far. Fisheko with a Haven choice early on shift. Is this just extra survivability? Has to be. I mean, that long-range poke is what he's looking for. That really goes to say that he wants that battle and wants to make sure that he can sustain himself through it. At least in marginal fashions, it's just a small percentage damage reduction early on, but eventually it will get good. And early shots here from Bugsy as well, try to help out. And Nara on point, though, very first and foremost. In pass wall, block any damage from the front line, but it's all over on that left hand side, perspective for Fnatic. They were getting pushed by NIP over here, and that flank is completely exposed. I do like that Bugsy is giving a lot of ground here specifically, and really not pushing too far into the opposition. Needs to be very careful. Side bait throwing out long range axes. Connects one bonker. Forced to ruin a travel back in again. Oh, Look out in the back line. Here's Fischek oh. on in the EV. Finds one. Will they get a second? Oh, it looks like just able to escape. Well, Shaolin, a little bit of danger here. fischek has got a nice angle for that 1v1, but does get uh -oh. poked. And fortunately, again, that's that mobility we're talking about. Able to blink and then soar away at any given moment. Side bait up top is 100% free. Lazy's not even able to poke it. Bugsy finds the kill, and Fnatic has got themselves the kills, although they are down on percentage. 72% for NIP, and now Perdo able to find one kill to his cell, but Bugsy what with the flick shot. as well. Wow. Bugsy, that's a Moodoo level flick right there with a Maeve as well. That close amount of a call on the melee strike as daggers do go out, and Fnatic, 72%. They surpass Ninjas in pajamas right now. NIP can engage. They got the Inara here. They're going to step onto the objective. Down goes the damage reduction. Up goes the impasse, blocking off the angle. Jera will just sit and contest for seconds. It is 90%, but there's nobody to hit support. This is dangerous. Oh, Sheep, but very low. But again, the Mother's Grace coming into play. But Fish Echo able to find two kills. That's absolutely huge. 99% for Fnatic to the 90 of NIP. The kills go the way of the team in red. And it looks like so will the point. Fnatic go up 1 0 on what could potentially be the last map they need. Fisheko is the best uh, the best Eevee in the world. Bold statements. Hands down. Okay. Hands down. You. Right now, the best Eevee in the world. Watch uh, PPL Top 5 plays, if you don't believe me, I think from week two. That chain with Killing Frost is unbelievable, but just has the ability to play projectile based champions as a whole so well and predict enemy movement. Looking good here as he tries to find some shots alongside that saw. We'll connect one, blink in, look for another shot, and blink right back out. That's exactly the harassment that you want to see from an Eevee. Not the most terrifying to look at, but definitely once you start catching the bad side of that Ice Lance, it will be enough to really make you reconsider. Jared able to find Sheep, but once again, Whirlwind out. So this is Fnatic. We're going to get aggressive, but the Dread Serpent will respond. Nothing from the back of it, though. Dread Serpent doesn't find anybody. And NIP with a solo frontliner right now needed a damage threat to zone away their opposition. They're just not finding that. Pado should fall here. Recovery keeps them healthy. Uh -oh. Bugsy takes a oh, headshot. Fish Echo comes in with a double kill save. Wow, just really good awareness from Fish Echo. I'm starting to believe more and more as I see it. The awareness is just next level. Able to understand not only the distance that he's going to cover. Oh, what a good Ice Storm as well. Locking the Dombo at least for a partial time in that space. Immortal being used. Fnatic's looking for the 2-0. They're going for it as well. Pudo is trying to contest. Fischeko hunting for blood around the outside of the objective. In goes Bugsy. Down goes Inara. Lazy responds and Bonka at last gets themselves on the board. But Fischeko is still here. The payload's moving. There's a minute left. One more shot will do it. And oh my goodness, Cybate from downtown. 
down, sends Lazy packing. This is not good for NIP. They do not have a response for this EV whatsoever. A lot is relying on this Talus to find some burst, for Lazy to find a stun arrow, for Buck to be able to chase, and none of those things are happening. Is Sybate able to tag a friend with that Vine there to send himself back on back to the back line. See, 35 ship, seconds still. They're just being outmatched in every single range right so now. Far, yeah. Long range is dominated by Grover. Close range is being dominated by hyper mobility from Maeve and from Eevee as well. And Fnatic, they're trying to push through. They're going for the pins of flank. Sheeper, the waters field is oh, down. Boxy has found three in a row. Oh no, Theo slays Sheeper as well. Payload rolling through. Buck is too far no away. Touch. That's free. That's 2-0 Fnatic and NIP. Looking at the cams, a couple of head shakes, a couple of eyebrows raised as if to say, uh, boys, what is going on? One in five is lazy. Oh, and four is Bird. When is the last time you saw Bird even have four deaths, let alone in the first round? When is the last time you saw Ninjas in Pajamas get an ultimate online? Wow. Good point. Let's just bonker with Troop. Uh, she was at 39%. Yeah. I mean, has Seismic Crash been used already? Shift, I didn't see it used in the last round. I have to imagine it had to have been five minutes through. Mm. I, I didn't see it go off, but again, it obviously didn't find much value right. in that defensive stand as it, again, didn't happen. And look at the dynamics between these items. It's literally just level twos and only a level one Kronos for Bird. He's not able to invest into anything else. Meanwhile, Fnatic happy to get some Master Ridings online, happy to get some Rejuves up. I mean, this is looking good for an early point fight. What will happen is the question. Fishaka will try and engage high ground. Oh, Shaolin's been poked out already into stealth. Fishaka wisely retreats. He doesn't want to get poked out too significantly. It's at 1,000 damage on a very low health EV is significant. Sybate with Whirlwind. Tops the team up and NIP trying to make use of capture boost to keep the point in contention. Through time and space, looking to separate some of that back line and front line. And Lazy will actually now finally get a kill on the Fishiko. He's got a Heat Haze, will draw down to the point, looking for it to hit. And there it is. Dread Serpent also coming out, looking for some extra help with that Heat Haze. But Lazy is missing so many shots. Hello, please. You need to play a little bit higher than that if you want to get a shot to come back here. Though, meanwhile, on the point, it is being charged back up 70% for NIP. And that's the good news. You need to get this damage online, though, because Fisher goes back and he's been a menace. The thing is, Bonkar is carrying some of the slack right now on Talith. The track god is starting to come into play. The damage from Fnatic is not right there in effect. Bird slays Saibate. That's a big kill. Seismic Crash locks down as well. Feel on Fernando. This could be the saving grace that NIP need, but Bugsy finds two. Bugsy's looking for a third. Bonkar's low on health. It's just one more second on the point. Low go oh, and down goes Jarrah. Buckwild is here. Bugsy takes a face full of lead and it's a double kill for Birdo as overtime ticks and NIP hold on. Birdo put the team on your back though getting in there and converting that point just by sure willpower and looking to continue this momentum forward and here's the thing these guys know each other at nip they need to be able to talk each other back up you know lazy is more than capable on shaolin is he able to get a good big kill there on ajera he does trade out his life but again the support being down is huge for this potential push Volcar in a lot of trouble here Ruta travel being count easy kill there afterburn i think getting credit for that one Vesheko is in a lot of trouble likely to fall to anara waters field getting credit for that kill as well Boxy, full Sepudo, and Ninjas in Pajamas are making good headway on this push so far. Oh, this Fnatic is a... have the defense. Where's Sheepa's position right now? It's great, actually, to be completely honest. She's up here making sure nobody can really get back to help out Fernando. Unfortunately, those Shield and the Celestial Touch coming out is going to be enough to keep that Fernando alive. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. So Clutch heals there again. Jera coming in when it matters most, able to help Fernando get out. And Fish Echo countering up with a kill of his own, so the defense looking solid after the back end of what seemed to be just a marginal play. High ground taken by Fnatic. At this point, NIP need to back up or they'll be very, very staggered. And losing Bonka, losing Sheepa early on to the fight is not a good way to start things like off. Now, if NIP want to go for an equalization play here, Shift, how do they box into Fnatic's defense, which is so mobile and so survivable? I mean, Fnatic has been getting aggressive on the back end of all these Fish Echo plays. You need to find a way to see that coming ahead of time. And as soon as they start to put the trigger to move in, you need to be able to counter it back with something like a Dread Serpent, even a Heat Haze to find some damage on the targets that really Locked make a down. difference. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this defense responds to this payload on this corner, which this is a death corner over here where the payload stalled out at. Lazy's moving around. You must be careful of Cybate here as one big axe could half their health, but Cybate's nervous. Buck is up top. Pado's looking for damage. Oh no, Lazy could be shut out here. Your side fails you, they say, into Heat Haze now, hitting the gas pedal, moving on in with 35 seconds left on this push. NIP are trying to find a way through, 118 health remaining. Stealth Grass is a saving grace. Lazy is really being a ninja right now. That was damage that he could have thrown out, though, and he's just, again, playing, you mentioned it, the ninja game. 
Not sure if the Shawlins wearing pajamas necessarily, but still fitting along with at least half the theme set of the team. And Fnatic though finds two kills for the defense, so maybe this play won't work out so well. And I wonder where that Shawlin is at the moment. Is He's trying to find his way, it looks like. Still possibly for a back play. door? Could go at least for an overtime, but Two. look at the grouping of all the Fnatic. I think Lazy's been told to hold it off. No, Lazy engages. Planner oh, goes no. down too far away and dies for it. Honestly, I feel like that would have been better just to not give anything up. Maybe one or two shots for some ult charge. Kind of seemed like a desperation move. Yeah. You know, if I'm being completely honest. Look at the expression oh, wow. as well on the you camera. Can, you can see it. I mean, very visibly frustrated with the gameplay so far, but I mean... Nothing's over yet. There are cauterized threes in where they need to be, and a very even dynamic here, actually, with the net worth, considering the scoreboard that we see, the 3-1. Interested to see what Lazy's damage looks like, as he did spend a lot of time just kind of hanging out, and uh, that's not good. 53,500, he's going to have to find a good round here. Talos, very low as well on the charts. You know, Pudo is really, again, putting the team in their backpack right Two. now. Capture boots two points down. Ninjas and Pajamas do take for 4%. And with an Inara, they can get some early control here. And I'm really liking their chances. Talos almost sitting on their ultimate as well. True Power could easily try and lock down maybe the Mave. Long range poke does come through. Somebody's got to pressure out this Grover if Lazy needs to be effective. Yeah, oh, nice opening kill on the Fish Echo. Hello. Bugsy does trade out Bonker. And seeing a lot of damage kind of funneling out. Bugsy's got a nice angle here, but oh, oh, it's actually countered away. Perdo able to help out with Burden. Nice long range shot there from Saibate. Trades for trades, four on four action as two more just respawned. And 74% for NIP and climbing up. True Power coming out trying to stop this. And of all the players to die very early on, Bonka with True Power is the worst one. Is able to get back to the fight. Engaging now through time and space. Does not connect onto anybody. Perdo with Buckwild is trying to shoot through the opposition. Sheepa finds one. Bugsy answers back. Jera slays in response, but is lazy finally turning up. Very low on health. Perdo is void gripped. Bugsy shuts them down. 93% for NIP, but Fnatic hold on. But the 93% is very, very important. All it takes is essentially two ticks on the point for you to capture. Of course, possibly at overtime. Midnight is available for Fnatic. Good dismounts as they move through, and Heat Haze needs to come out. If this comes down to Will Leezy perform. Problem is, Midnight's just been used to try and buy some time for Bugsy on the way to the objective. Lazy engages, Sheepa goes towards the point. Burned down immediately, Heat Haze is here. Is this a saving grace? Can Lazy do it? Kevin Jensen finds the stun, nice. finds the kill on the Bugsy. Gotta move in, it's overtime at 99. The damage is here, Blood gets the double kill. Cybate moves in as well. Fischeko cleans up Bonka. Oh, no. Cybate finds two and it's all Fnatic. They're going to the finals. Call me a believer, my friend. I called it early saying Fnatic was probably one of the first to get out after that performance versus Space Station. They come back on the back end of a lot of really good damage play. Bugsy and Thiel find a way to make it back through and NIP fall apart in the semis. Look at that. A defending champion from last year in Thiel. Alongside the squad of a lot of new blood, not the super team which NIP was thought to be coming in top and demonstrating good sportsmanship. The hugs came out between them. Feel probably still owes but a few, few pennies there from a couple of missed hooks, maybe in the PPL, but not during this tournament. McCoa Main obviously not able to get it, but again, these two European teams have such a high degree of camaraderie behind them. They're yeah. all in it for the competition. I mean, you talk about just again, that team chemistry that was once there for what seemed to be likely forever. You know, Thiel gets split up, able to find himself a new team, and he's looking solid so far. Fnatic, against pretty much all odds for a lot of us, able to find a way back in, and they're going to contend for the first ever Paladins World Championship. And once again, folks, that will be coming up tomorrow, and coming up now as we are done, and you can probably hear my voice is going <laughs> after that Sounds final good. end. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're getting raspy here, folks. It's like a blues lounge. Oh yeah, it is time for Golden Boy in the desk. <laughs> Analyst, please take it away and let's wrap up for one last time. Oh yeah, serenade me. So wonderfully, Vox. That's what I want tonight. All right, mm. <laughs> so welcome back everyone to the Alienware Analyst Desk. I'm Golden Boy as we close things out here. Congratulations to Fnatic and to echo what Schiff said, against all odds, they stand tall and they are going to the finals. Joining me now, Meta Pusher as well as Gormizer. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot to talk about with that game, but it is 12.24 a.m. here in Georgia. So let's keep it quick. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> King Meta, go, go, go. I know you've been wanting to talk forever now. I mean, 
what can you not say about Fnatic? These guys have done everything they had to. They struggled at the beginning. There were yeah. all these question marks of what Fnatic do we have? Do we have land Fnatic that's just spotty at best, or do we have online Fnatic that you know comes out as the first seed in the PPL regular season and they look spotty early? But ever since they've not they dropped down to the losers bracket, they've looked unstoppable. And the people in the crowd here. They're not, I mean, they're not rooting for Fnatic. Every single game, the crowd is rooting against them, and every single, every single time, they shut them up. Well, I think they got to make some fans now, man, yeah, because oh, yeah. at this point, I mean, look, they beat Space Station Gaming. They beat Entity. They beat, um, oh, my China goodness. Dream. They beat China Dream, and that was like a stacked house for that matchup. Yeah. Uh, they ended up be, uh, beating G2. G2, the North American Last Hope. Mm -hmm. Right? Like at some point, at what point do you start cheering for Fnatic? Because I know for me personally, that time is now. I'm cheering for Fnatic. I want them to go all the way. I mean, Gore, what a story. Does it have anything to do with the fact that Phoenix came up and said he was going to tweet you a picture of him lying in his bed while we were still oh, here? Oh, 150,000%. <laughs> If Phoenix sends me that picture, he is dead to me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but yeah, Gore, your thoughts on that match? I mean, it's there's just one thing that comes to my mind. There were five games, and there are five times here that I just wrote about the fact that Lazy just wasn't having the impact that we saw in the last few days. It wasn't the same style of play. There were tons of times on the first Mave and the second Mave where there were a lot of key shots, a lot of key daggers that were missed, and the Shaolin in that last game mm -hmm. just missing some of these really crucial shots that could have turned it around, and it just didn't happen. And you could kind of see that in his face through his camera as well. Yeah, you know, Lazy's a player who wears his heart on his shoulder. He doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. hide any emotions. If he loses a 1v1, you see him, you know, smack the desk. If he wins something, he throws his hands up. And, I mean, it's clear that I, I don't know where I'm going with this. To be honest, Golden Boy, take it away. It's clear that the <laughs> it's clear that the passion is there for Paladins. We all have brain farts when it's uh, past midnight here, way past my bedtime. I'm 30 years old, okay? I'm bald. I'm fat. I'm just tired. You saw me eating some Doritos and coffee. I'm trying that, to keep this You were living esports. That's how I was, we keep I was alive. straight up living that Doritos and Mountain Dew life. You know what I'm saying, baby? Although no do because it's it's too much sugar. Um, too much. All right, well, fellas. Uh, just met out your final thoughts. Uh, we won't have you uh, tomorrow, but I want to get your thoughts on just overall. The, uh, I mean, absolutely event. insane event so far. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to be on the desk, but I will be in the stands screaming my heart out. I hope so. I hope you like blue over here. Where's my boy blue? Is blue anywhere here? Is blue? No. Okay. He asked his one shout out. Oh, he wasn't right here. There. Hey, my boy blue. We had this one guy here all weekend. Uh, he go I call him blue uh, because his name is terrible. Not appropriate. And not appropriate for the stream. Call him blue. And he's been cheering all day. Voice is gone. Awesome stuff. Gore, I'll get your thoughts tomorrow because I'll see you tomorrow. You and me, my partner in crime. Finger touch. Let's go. Pow. There you it's go. It's awkward. Well, I'm, I'm right here, Golden Boy. Not awkward I'm right at all. right here, man. That's going to do it for us here at the desk, guys. Our grand final is set. Fnatic versus Na'Vi. And, I mean, honestly, it's been like 15,000 hours of Paladins, and you couldn't have asked for anything better. What a close for the day. But for now... Let's send it over to Pretty Hair to close it out with an interview with the man himself, Bugsy. Thank you so much, Alex. You are not fat. You are not bald. You are big boned and scalp challenged. You are a national icon and a treasure to us all, sir. Please give yourself the damn credit you deserve. Please, please. But of course, I am standing here with the man himself, Adrian Bugsy Bogowski. What a day for you, man, man. You have made quite the run through the loser's bracket, battered, not looking good, frankly, on day number one. But here you stand in the finals. What do you have for us? Uh, it's been a very exhausting day. Uh, it's like 14 hours. To that note, do you feel, OK, so this is your, what, third set of the day now. Did that give you somewhat of an advantage in some respect to be able to play so much? It almost feels like maybe the meta evolved throughout the day almost. You guys just look on a whole nother level from what we saw for the qualifiers, what we were expecting, but you guys feel like you've just got to figure it out. You're really playing your game. Um, we just took it set by set. Uh, we prepared yesterday versus China and didn't care about playing versus G2 or NIP. We just wanted to do it set by set, and we took the time in between the games to uh, get a new draft going. 
So I'm going to hit you with a couple rapid-fire questions. Some players call themselves flex players, but it might be a little front line here, maybe a little support, maybe a flank, maybe four champions, we'll say. How many classes have you played? Uh, I think I've played every single class this tournament. How many champions are we at? Ten now? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you would need to ask production. I think it's above seven. I mean, flanks, tanks, supports, damage, the talus, the mave, things we've seen before, things we haven't seen before. Is there anything that Fnatic can't play? No. You will move on to the finals. But first, how did it feel to defeat some of your old teammates here in Perido and Sheepa? That's got to feel good. I don't know if it necessarily feels good. Uh, we're all friends. Uh, it was a great competition, no matter what. Uh, it feels obviously amazing to, to move forward and uh, compete on the main stage. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I wasn't here last year, so hopefully this year I will, I will have a whole crowd cheering for us. That's a good point, Bugsy. One of the favorites, he and his squad, D69. He wasn't here last year, but he will be this year. Tomorrow, Bugsy hunts for one of these. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you here bright and early tomorrow morning for the PWC Finals. Looks like you're changing and all